guys. There's something cool. Hello, hello, hello. How you doing? Can y'all hear me? All my stuff is acting stupid right now. How y'all doing? <laughs> What's up, baby girl? <laughs> Thank you, Queen Zayas. How's everybody doing? How y'all two doing? It's just, just a couple of us. I'll give people time and chance to get in here. I haven't been here in a while. I missed y'all. Thank you, my love. How are you? Not so good, but we'll pull through. What about you? Uh, this time of year is the busiest for... Um, spiritual work um, so I am burning the candle at both ends like nobody's business I am tired so I just came to check in with y'all and see what's good I'm um, doing good today that's good it's, it's um, quite cool here in New York we got it like 60 something degrees today it's been like 80 something it's been really hot the other days but today has been it's not that hot today here so I figured people would be in the house Come in here and do this because outside is a little chilly right now. When I say chilly, I mean like you need a jacket and all of that. And I don't know why I took off my glasses so I can not see what y'all are saying. Ciao. I took some questions. I got some answers. It's only a couple of y'all. I'm going to give it a few more minutes before I start. But y'all know I'll save it so I don't even um, waste my time in letting it... um build up. You to go and do some work on it to go out, but since you love me and my spiritual is. <laughs> if you got some questions, if Cali is cool too, yeah, the weather's been bugging out. I don't know what's going on. All this day is tomorrow, I guess they said let's cool it down before everybody be outside tomorrow. It's supposed to be a little bit normal. We shall see. If either you, if anybody got questions, y'all go ahead and ask your questions now. We can go through my personal little conversation for a few minutes and see what's, what's really good. Any questions that you ladies had? How are y'all going in y'all spiritual walk? Do y'all feel stuck in any way, shape, or form? Do y'all need any clarity on anything? Any um, information on anything? Anything that you think is going to help you step out into your own and go a little bit further with what you're doing, like your next steps? question does de deja vu really mean you need a cleanse no um i had a lot of experience with the other day i'm not touching no when you experience deja vu it said that a couple of things you remember that your life cycle that you're in right now you've lived before so sometimes things will repeat themselves to see if you have learned um the lesson from it Sometimes it also means that you are in the right place where you're supposed to be at this point at this time in your life. So it's kind of like a confirmation from the universe saying that you're exactly where you're supposed to be. And you should be paying attention to what's going on, right? There may be a decision that you need to make in this time frame that is not going to be the same de uh, decision that you made the last time around when the, the test presented itself or the next stage of your life was starting to open up for you. There was something in this time that you're supposed to be paying attention to. Um, you should be working on your intuition at this point um, so that you get clearer uh, messages from your guides and from your ancestors and so when that deja vu comes around you remember everything is energy and energy never dies and when it presents itself that way where it feels so familiar there's something in that that you've already done before there's something in that that you need to be paying attention to and in this time um, if you don't meditate you really need to um, start meditating just a little bit more. Um, meditation quiets the mind. And I use, um, on YouTube, they have a bunch of uh, uh, um, meditative music, right? Um, there is a, what is it called? The Twin Heart Balance or something, Twin Flame Balance or something like that. It has nothing to do with a love or a significant other. Um, it has to do with um, your flame, right? connecting with your spiritual essence and and what resides from you in the heavens down below or however you see 
the spiritual realm. Um, so that's what I think that, that represents for you. I was wondering if I can get spiritual guidance. What should, you have a question, my love? What kind of spiritual guidance? What are you talking about? What kind of guidance you need, honey? Let me know, and if it's something that I could assist you with, I will definitely do that. How do you feel about sleeping with the windows open? I'll sleep with the windows open. I just have protection. Like, if you live on the ground floor, and, like, I don't believe in just having your curtains open where um, people can look in your window, that's a problem for me. If you live on the ground floor, you need to have gates or something at your window so it's not like a free access to come and go. This is for regular people, not even just spirits. You know what I'm saying? Spiritually, you can have stuff over your windows, right? I have something over every opening in my house, right? So things over your windows, things over your doorways, things over your front and your back door if you have more than one door. Um, I don't have like screens at your window, something like that. I asked because it was perceived that energy can come in through the window. It's a, it's a doorway. Energy flows through openings, period. You can have a hole in your house, and what is considered a hole? Say you don't have a grate on um, an air duct in your house. That's a hole that an energy can come through. There's, there's a, an old do, and I don't know which one it is off the top of my head because I don't know them by hand like that, but there's one that says cover your holes. Cover the holes in your house. That means cover all holes. Any holes in your house. Even where if you have a, um, a doorway and you know the, the piece of the door that the lock clicks into. If you don't have a door on that and this is just open and that's just an open hole. You cover that hole. What? Tape? Stuff it? Whatever. We don't leave anything like that open. Spirit is energy. Energy moves through anything. Think of air. If you could catch a draft from it, if you just breeze coming through it, absolutely, why can the spirit not? Yes, they can. But you need to have more protections up in your household. Crystals over your door with frames. Um, Efu and the cascadilla over around your door, your window frames, your window um, window frames, door frames. Um, um, <laughs> red brick powder. Um, black salt. Um, um, you can sprinkle some camphor and place it across there. You can also mix a bunch of stuff together and make a powder. You come on, this is where you use your stuff. Look at the stuff that you got. Look at what you use. Think of what's protected. Even if you ground up a powder on your own and then you put a little bit of obsidian in there because you know that crushes down real good. You get a mortar, you pound that together. You put all that shit together in the mortar and you make your own powder. You pray over that. You take a knife or a machete, whatever your people got. One of them got one of them things. You talk to her. You tell her what you're doing with it. You sit it over that. You light a candle. You put a glass of water there and you tell her, this, I'm charging this. Feel me? I'm charging this for you. So anything that comes through the any one of these places that I sprinkle this powder, cut its fucking head off. You you got this machete. I'm putting here. I'm charging. I'm telling you whenever you see it, you smell it, you feel it, anything, go ham with it. You gotta talk to your people. All they wait, it crushed stone. Yes, it obsidian crushes very easily. Black obsidian crushes very easily. You can just drop it. That should have been a bunch of little chips. Crush that shit up like a powder in a mortar. Get like a um a ceramic mortar. Or I have a crystal mortar. It's crystal, so it's real, real hard. And I pound shit up like nobody's business in that. You can use some of those palos. You can use all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just sit there and think with your people to say, what am I putting in this? Think about the outcome and the desire that you want, right? Everybody want to talk about who do it in some manifestation, bitch, you manifestation manifesting some protection in your household. And it's banging because it's your own ashe on it. It's banging because you decided to go outside of the box of what people are selling at the store that put they they ashe on some shit to put your own ashe on it. Feel me? So all kind look up what makes sense to go together. What was my desire? All these things work in context with that. This is what I'm using. You sit down and you take care of that. You know what I'm saying? And then, I 
I'm a person who is uh, hoodoo's in my background. Feel me? So we use the Bible for prayers all the time. If you ever read the Bible, oh, it be banging off in the Bible. Are you kidding me? Talk over them prayers in the Bible when you doing this stuff. Have something playing in the background. You know what I'm saying? Energy, right? So vibration, right? Music, all that. I want all of that to be ringing through what I'm doing in that moment. I want all of that in my house while I'm doing it. I want it going in like that. Feel me? I live... Sorry. I live in the shelter with nine other families since I've been there. I'm feeling so bad, so frustrated, unmotivated. Because you have to clean yourself frequently living in that type of environment, my love. And when I say frequently, I mean probably like every week for you. You should at least have uh, some kind of a spray. Um, like when you make a spiritual cleansing and you add a little 1800 cologne to it and put it in a spray bottle and leave it in your refrigerator so that it stays fresh. I want you to... Like every day when you come in, in and out of there, you, you're, you have to remember the energy of the people that you're living around. You have to remember that it is not a happy, y'all ain't happy being there. Y'all are there because y'all have to be there. Nobody's there because they said, this is shit, this is dope, this is lit, I'm going to prosper here and I'm going to thrive here. That's not what this place is. So you need to um, remember that it's energy, right? And you can't allow for such energy to attach itself to you without constantly cleansing that off that must be constantly cleansed for you until you can get out of there you understand and then it will open up space for you to vibrate a little bit differently um and get the ideas that you need from your guides and from your ancestors that's going to help you move from there I just did two months in Miami Day jail. The energy's on that place. I'm like, oh, girl, you were supposed to do a, a full, like a Reiki session after that, too. You know what I mean? When, because I equated, like, jail is the, the energy in there, bananas, right? There was a time where our tradition would send our men off to war and when they came back from war before they were allowed to join back to the village and the families they had to spend a time with a, a healer to clean them and help balance and ground them and help remove some of the energy of the stuff that they picked up while they were out there warring jail ain't nothing but war all the niggas that war and bang is in that place. People die in there. People get, it's all kinds of stuff in there. So you really need to, young lady who went away, um, try to get a shaman or a healer, and I would say, a, or a Reiki master to do a session on you to cleanse that energy that you got locked up with you off of you because you don't, you bring some of that home with you. Lately, I've been feeling so down, and I realized recently that it was who was around me cleansed the spaces and dropped them and feel much better. Other people's energy can infiltrate that. Absolutely. Especially if you're a spiritual person and you don't even realize it, right? You're not understanding why you feel the way that you feel. Y'all got to start paying attention to y'all feelings. Most times it's like this energy is whack. This person is whack. And that be your guides and your ancestors saying, get this bitch out of here. She's funking up the joint. You don't smell that. You don't feel that. Every time you leave somebody, you feel low. You don't be messing with them type people. Pay attention. Keep your eyes wide open. Don't discount anything. I just had my son. He just turned two months and constantly cries. The vibes here are very bad. I just cleansed him because my poor baby was... Yeah, the children are more sensitive to that right? Children are way more sensitive to energies. Children see spirits. They can pick up on things that you cannot, right? You need to do more though to help soothe your own spirit. Like, so what are you doing to help soothe your spirit? And who's goddess? If, if I, you know, is it a guide? Of um, shaky when barely falling asleep that's that energy you got to clean yourself baby and i want you to use real if you have access to some funds hold up if you have access to some money and you can go to a botanica and get you some herbs you need some real herbs like you need some arasa con todo you need some um, rompe muralla, you need some abre camino, you need some espanta muerte you know, I have a, a there's a thing on my page um, it might be in my highlights, um, of spiritual baths and herbs and things of that nature, so you wanna um, 
you want to make sure that you're using that kind of stuff to cleanse you because the energy is very, very heavy. Palo Santo is for calming. That doesn't cleanse and remove stuff from an area. It'll help calm for a time, but that doesn't remove the energy, right? It just helps calm the energy. You got to push it out. I don't need you to just calm it. What shouldn't be here shouldn't be here. I need that pushed out. So for instance, you would want like some frankincense and myrrh, some dragon's blood, those types of instances, the resins that you got to burn on like a charcoal, things like that. The food is here. Um, Palo Santo is for calming. And sage, again, that doesn't do anything for the heavy, heavy burning, um, heavy energy that resides in that place. If, if you notice how when you do it, it's only for a little bit of time that you feel okay. It comes right back. It doesn't push it enough. You need The things that I named are things that spirits don't like the smell of. It is very gross to them, so they leave immediately. They don't want to smell that. To make something to go in your favorite fashion. Um, hold up. I'm not catching everything, y'all. Y'all coming kind of fast. Um, as long as you know who your, your goddess is specifically and not that you don't pick this person up or this energy up and you have never had it divined on, just I just want you to be safe in what it is that you are doing, my love, because um, energies um, can... Um, there's, there's a lot of tricks to energies out here. And just because... Um, they told you that that's who they was. I need you to tell them when you ask an energy, who are you and how do you come? They should always tell you something that re references God. Pick the way you call God. Any name that you got for God, whatever it is, they should let you know that they come in light and spirit and truth and that they come under God's um, command. You understand? You They work underneath God. Big ones that I know have reaches around me, especially around my kids. I just don't know where to start. Sometimes my mind shuts down and goes in circles. <laughs> Um, you need to clean your head. There's also a recipe for head washes on my page and my highlights as well. You need to make sure that you are completely clean. And if you think you have these energies around you and you want to know, you need an ephod divination. But it has to be from someone that is reputable. Um, and I wouldn't go with any of these people that you met online unless they were referred you, somebody that you know, that you trust, referred you to them. And, and just make sure that you're using your discernment, right? Because y'all trust every daggone body. Um, I'm sorry. I heard something about a court case. What do you mean what's good for court cases? I got what's good for court cases and should I help him with his court case? Who's him? Tisha. The door. Who's him and what's the court case? And help him how? Your brother. What's the charge? Or round about it. Don't give me specifics, but what's the... How, how do you think you're going to help him? And, and tell me this. You helping him. Does the... See, we have to remember that we have to pay for what we do sometimes. And if j jail is what is going to calm us and stop us from doing the things and nothing else... like. The fact that this person's in trouble now, oh, divorce. Oh, that's different. Why do you, um, feel the need why does he need help with the court case what's what's happening are they working the case because you got to remember a court women taking everything okay does she deserve it not him her is he open to the help that you're offering you got to ask this question does he deserve it right does she deserve what she's getting in, in, in from the courts, right? You know your brother. You know what it was. You're a woman. No, she never worked spiritually. Right? We're not talking about financially.
fucking whole marriage. I mean, is this, this, he got to pay. If he took care of her the whole marriage, that's a laws. You can't stop that. You know what I'm saying? He going to have to pay. However, there is a limit to what, you know, some judges go, go, go crazy. Um, and, and she deserves it. So she's going to get what she's supposed to get, but you don't want them to drain it, right? What I would suggest Because y'all got to remember When we do works like this It's not us that's doing the work There's a spirit that has to be Agreeing to help you move that stuff Right? It's a spirit behind the works that we do When we do court cases and things like that It's not us that is saying That we're, you know I'm going to just do it Um you can talk to your ancestors, but this is not even something that you need to do. This is something he needs to be doing. He wants to make it fair, right? So is he okay with you? But he has to agree to it, right? So if he's not the one that's going to come and ask the ancestors for help, what are you doing in it? It says follow your own rhythm, which means mind your business and worry about your own life. You should be more concerned with you unless he is the one because remember, y'all got the same ancestors. So I wouldn't put myself in the middle of nothing unless somebody asked me for help. I'll even go so far as to offer the assistance and say, um, do you, what do you think about this? And if he's not saying, okay, I'm, I'm willing to, then they're not going to do nothing. They're not going to help him because you're not really asking them to do nothing other than make sure that it's fair. You're not fixing it. You're not working it. You just wanted to make sure that this justice of the, the scales of justice are balanced and that it's fair. You don't know what he put that woman through, whereas now he's being drained, but how long was he draining her that now they're getting a divorce? See, we got to pay for everything that we do, and if he wasn't fair to her in their marriage, then... He doesn't deserve for it to be fair. And so the universe is going to give him exactly what it he deserves. What we give out is what we get back. So if he, the, the, the way that he was unfair to her emotionally or, or, or uh, fidelity-wise in the marriage, um, he won't feel that bad because she ain't going to cheat on him. But she's going to take his money and that's going to hurt him. You know what I'm saying? That's going to make him understand wrong, what wrong shit feel like. Since you don't understand what wrong is, since you've done it for so long, I don't, I don't know him. You know what I'm saying? But I, I can tell that he wasn't the best to her in their marriage and in their relationship. He got to feel that some kind of way. He got to get that back some kind of way. Right? You can ask the ancestors, you know, just please make it, make it sure that he's okay. You know, I pray for my family all the time without getting into specifics as to what's going on in their life. They see what's going on with him. That's their child too. You know what I'm saying? So, you, you be mindful when you're thinking about doing stuff as far as work is concerned um, for something that really ain't got nothing to do with you. Because if you had a conversation with her and you asked her a little bit more about their relationship and what, what, what transpired, you'll hear some things about your brother that you were just like, wow. And as a woman, we know how that feels. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes they got to eat that. But you want it to be fair. Um, you can burn white. White covers everything. Blue is, you do blue if you want just peace. You know what I'm saying? Um... And you talk to them. You tell them what's what it is. But again, he got to want the help from them. The same way that you can speak with them and do all of that kind of stuff, he, he got to be the one to go and ask them for that help, for that shit to really kick off. If you are the source, you ain't the one going through the divorce. It's him. You ain't the one's money getting taken. It's his. We don't take on everybody else's stuff, especially if they're not willing to be a part of that. Oh, thank you, my love. Um, let me go back. Somebody else asked me something. 
I have sworn by bitch. She's been so busy. She hasn't been able to start the process for the reading. Okay. Um, stay on top of them. Remember, this time of year is, um, hey, cuz, um, this type of year is, um, very, very busy. Um, what would you use to make something go in your favor faster? Something like what? The nine colors of what? Nine, nine is equate with us and our tradition is, is equated to Oya. So that represents the nine children that she had that didn't survive. This summer, summer for us, everybody, the kids are out of school, so people's schedules are a little bit different. For um, You know, those that pay tuition don't have to pay tuition in the summer, so they got a couple extra dollars to take care of what it is that they need to take care of spiritually. Um. Nine also, you remember Oya um, brings the ancestors, you know what I'm saying? She works very closely with the ancestors. She gave birth to Egun. So it's quick, it's time for some changes in your life. When Oya's energy presents, and, and when I say, it does not mean that it is Oya that is presenting herself. This is what the number nine represents. This is what her energy represents. This is the part that, that you know, when it's her time to shine, this is the time for y'all to make some changes, right? And fast changes. No more dragging your feet. No more saying what it is that you're gonna do without doing. No more putting your plan. Uh, no more uh, pause at putting your plan into action. No, your your um, working on your spiritual craft needs to be um, heightened. Right? You don't do enough with your meditation. You don't do enough with your. Uh, you should be reading tarot cards. I don't know who reads your cards, but you need to be doing that a little bit more to get some guidance and connecting with spirit just a little bit more. You do a lot of running around and you do a lot of things to hide what's really going on with you. And sometimes you need to just sit down and make some changes because the running around and the stuff that you're doing is not doing anything to help better your life. There are temporary fixes to what it is that you're feeling right now. Yes, Blackwater. There are temporary fixes. Of um, as to what you're going through right now, the temporary distractions, and at this point, those that type of attitude, that type of um, uh, when we're young, we do that kind of stuff because we don't know no better, right? But you, they, they calling you, and you ain't even going over there to sit, get the candle, get the water, cover your head, put on a skirt, do the prayers, and start talking to them. Let them talk back to you. Let them guide you just a little bit more so that you know what the next thing is that you're supposed to be doing. Somebody says something, and if they call, and they calling you. And you know they calling you. But you so busy. You got to face what's going on. You can't run no more. Quick change means change your life now. Now you got to change. It is not about giving them offerings. It is about your time and your energy. That is your currency, my love. Attention, my love. It is not about orphans. That's not what they are asking of you at this time. That is not what they are requesting of you at this time. They don't want your offerings. You can offer them the sun, the moon, and the stars, and until you sit your ass there and give them your undivided attention, they're not trying to hear nothing you got to say. It is about your attention. It is about paying attention to us when we speak to you. It is about listening to the clues that we're sending you. And get the fucking... Clean your head more. Stop drinking so much. Don't smoke to the point where you can't function no more. We smoke a little bit to take the edge off, but you got to remember that that marijuana is the essence. That's an energy. That's a spirit. We don't abuse that. You're not supposed to abuse that. People think that that's something, oh, I'm calm. Yeah, you calm, but you could have took two totes, three totes, put that down and still been calm. Please. Um... When you can read your cards without, no, like, you, you got to be in tune with the energy that reads the cards, right? You have to be so in tune that when you flip in the cards, you know off rip what them shits mean. You ain't got to ask a bunch of people. You don't got to go to the book. You don't got to nothing. You know that when you look at that card and you know who you're talking to, that energy is going to tell you 
this, that, and the third about the card. Or they're going, they're going to give you the information in reference to the card and that person. That's why I can use the same card for six different people and have six different meanings for that one card. I'm not going by what the book said. I don't read tarot based off of a book. I don't care what that white lady name is who wrote that book. What I care about is what my spirit told me to say when I looked at this card. Well, my spirit told me that she picked up on that person's energy when I was reading that card. It has nothing to do with the book. The only time that you really should be picking up a book is if you got the message, right? And you gave the message, but now you like them herb cards or them um, crystal cards. Those don't give you a lot of information, right? And you, if you don't know what the herb does, then you're going to have to um, go to the book to say, all right, this does this, 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 and this. But you already gave the message. You're not cheating. You know what I'm saying? If you using those crystal cards, you don't. Nobody's gonna memorize all of the thousands of crystals. I got a deck of cards that I ain't never seen half these crystals a day before in my life. <laughs> okay, never. I was like, what is this stone? For that type of stuff, you need to look at the book, right, to see what is the key point of what this card means. Because the book is always gonna tell you what the key point of that card is, and I'm only talking about herb, animal. And crystal cards, because those, there's no way for you to know unless it gives you like a slash something on the front of the card, like faith or uh, truth or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? That's how you're going to know. You've got to be on that. you got to be so in tune to your people and practice. You know what I'm saying? Find a friend or a family member that'll be like, let me practice on you. Come over here. I got something to do or do it on a video chat or whatever. You know what I'm saying? However you are going to be doing these readings, practice on your folks. And don't just be out here trying to charge people. You know what I'm saying? But if you can't read yourself, that's a problem. We start with us. I got to know what y'all telling me. And I got to be able to accept when y'all tell me, go sit down, you stupid ass. I'd be like, okay. You can do on Friends. You know what I'm saying? But don't cheat, because you know y'all be knowing what be going on with y'all friends, so it's not hard for you to tell um, tell who, what's going on in their life if they already told you their entire life story, their entire situation. You know what I'm saying? You want to try to touch on something that, um, you, just practice, is what I'm saying. Just practice. Practice makes perfect. No, it ain't. That's bullshit. How read yourself is contradicted. How? How is that possible? You think that your guides are only here for you to be using their energy and their gifts and their sight and their forethought and all of that other kind of stuff for the world and not for you? They're here for you first. You know how many times I get flipped on by my spirit guides? Are you kidding me? I get people all the time. All the time. I be I eat it. Like, oh, I got it. I should. You know how many times there's somebody go meditate? Oh, somebody, that was one of my questions. Somebody asked me, do I ever get the urge to go sit down and meditate? Bitch, all the time. They be like, go sit your stupid ass down. Now. And meditate. How about you do that? How about you go clear your mind? How about you go sit down somewhere? Let this energy move itself. Turn the music on. I put them beats on. Sometimes before I even get out the bed in the morning, when I wake up, I'll get the earbuds and pop them in. If I know my day's finna be crazy, I'll put the um the vibration music on before I get up and do a quick 5, 10 minutes or 10, 20 minutes, however long I feel I need to lady until I'm zen in the motherfucker and then get up and start my day. I've set the... the course of energy for the day i've set the energy scale for what it is that i'm about to do whatever you don't y'all be dreaming y'all be traveling in y'all sleep all kinds of stuff you went to bed on some bullshit sometimes y'all wake up on some bullshit meditate before you start moving around all the time you know how many times i'm go meditate because i'll be forgetting i come right over here i sit down i talk to the ladies the first card i flip over be like go meditate now i'll be like "Ooh, you right true that's how you know you're ready when you can eat it when they give it to you straight you and them ain't nobody else involved because they flip on you the same way they gonna flip on anybody else and you harder facts um my bad i got a list of questions people have asked me i'm gonna go through them yeah it starts with you energies and yours want to intertwine with the message your energy it ain't your energy though you have got to start separating that you know what i'm saying it's not you it's, it's your guides i don't know these people i don't know shit about their lives i don't know half of the stuff that's going on with y'all you know what i'm saying but i know what they tell me to tell you i know what i heard i trust what i heard 
I know that they talk to me. You know what I'm saying? I know that they give messages. I know I know that I don't know nothing about your life. So where's it coming from? I ain't set up a bovida just to be having no bovida. I set up a bovida so that y'all can come through here and, and talk to me. I mean, I don't want to get out of the bed, but not of my relationship. Sometimes my body just don't be ready. Well, you got to make your body ready, baby. You got a day to do. What do you mean hours before you get out of the bed? That means your energy is drained. You know what I'm saying? You need to um, maybe do a little bit of yoga. You know? You remember that everything that we do as far as even movement and exercise, right? Um, and you go to bed too late. Movement and exercise. And you travel in your sleep. So you need to be, um, some days we wake up very tired, especially when we've done traveling in our sleep. When we be dreaming, we be off different places all the time. You kidding me? It be some days that I got to take a spiritual bath every single day for a month. I got to do it. It is what it is. It is what it is. I know how I feel. I know what makes me feel better. And I know what I got to do. You need to um, also get into some grass some more. You need to get in. Um, I have a. You need to um, get, get into nature just a little bit more. And suck up that pure force of nature that comes through the ground. You know what I'm saying? Sit down in the grass. You need to sit down a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? You need to get by the water a little bit more. You need to be in nature a little bit more. You do the plants and you you know you have that stuff in your house, but you need you you have to remember that the core of the earth has a vibration and an energy and a frequency and everything else. When we go out into nature, um, I'm very much like I have an area that I'll just go downstairs outside and just sit there. You know what I'm saying? And just sunbathe. Salam alaikum. Come on, siete rayo. Talk to him. That is pure sun, pure seven rays, pure energy, pure heat. Get with that. That's what you need to be doing. That's what you need to be doing. You need to fuck with that sun a little bit more, though, while you can, before it get cold again. You need to fuck with that sun a little bit more. Yeah, I'm sure a butterfly was, because you still sitting in your cocoon. They're like, hello, remember, you see us? We, we butterflies. We came out of our cocoons. Could you come? The shopping to the other stuff, so I've been at the river and beaches eating some. But you ain't talking to Siete Rayo. You forget about him when you get out there. You can't forget about him when you get out there. You can't forget about him when you get out there. Mm -hmm. we'll get to these questions. Somebody asked me, is cutting their hair making them vulnerable to spiritual attacks? Only if it came out in your Odu. Only if it came out in your letter when you did a, an ancestral divination. I just told you what you need to do. Go to the cars that have been calling you. That's number one. Get to that Bovada. Get to that altar. Whatever altars you got that you ain't paying enough attention to, get your ass over there. Yeah, you're talking to Olodumari, but you have to remember Nsambi for us. That's Nsambi. So, remember when I said about learning the language and the dialect of who it is that you're dealing with, right? You deal with Olodumari, that's Arisha, right? But when you deal in Impalo, that's Nsambi. You got to talk to Nsambi for that. They, you got to speak their language. If you're pulling on their energy, no make or no say. If you don't know me, don't call me. But you got to know me. So you know that I don't. when I come, I don't say God, I say Nsambi. Ntata Nsambi. You have to know who, what, where, why, how. If you want it to work, you got to talk to me the way I need you to talk to me. Right? This is in studying a little bit more, learning a little bit more about who and what. Feel me? 
Check it. Um, the cutting of the hair. That's only if it is coming up in your old dude that says you don't cut your hair. That's only if you got a divination and they said you can't cut your hair. There's an old dude that says no cutting of the hair. You know what I'm saying? So it comes up specific. What happens for, um, yes, what happens for, um, but Blackwater, who reads your tarot cards? Um, just because if, you know, this person can't cut their hair because of a spiritual tax, that, that shit ain't got nothing to do with you. You know what I'm saying? You gotta remember, hair holds energy. Hair holds shit that happened to you in your lifetime. Sometimes it's good to chop your hair. Sometimes the ancestors or the Orisha come down and tell you, you don't cut your hair. No, not for you. We don't need you out here looking like a little boy. Or we don't need you out like, we like your hair like that. It gives off a certain energy where you're concerned. It's specific to you. That's, that's, a, that's a very general question. And it's not something that's a general answer. It's specific to you and you alone. Um, nobody. That's, that's not true. No. You have to find out. This is the issue, baby. You need the type of divination that's going to give you the information about the who's, the what's, the where's, the why's, the how's. Who's the spirit guide that reads this? What's her name? Do I have Do I have Madamas? Do I have gypsies? Do I have this, that, this, and the third? We figure out who is reading what. Do they even want those cards? Whose cards do these belong to? If nobody's reading these cards, why am I using these cards? All of your guides don't speak through tarot cards. Somebody might speak through a pendulum. Somebody might speak through bones. Somebody might speak through shells. You have to find out the way that they're, they're tools of communication. Yeah, thank you, Black, um, um, Mama Somachetti. It, there's a spirit. Remember, everything that we do when we touch it up and call it anything spirituality, the first part of that word is spirit. Who? Until you figure out the who, you're always going to be confused with what it is. But there's a spirit there because the energies are calling to you. You got to find out who it is. That's why it's not making a lot of sense right now. Because she's sitting there looking at you like, yo, you don't even know me. Could you go figure this shit out, please? And if you wasn't spending this money running the streets, you could have got one of them divinations that's going to pay for you to find out some more about me. It's not us, but the spirit who works through us. That's right. Um, somebody asked me, can bad actions of family members affect the elevation of your ancestral spirits? Not if somebody's doing the elevation. So the person who asked that question, if you are doing work to elevate your ancestors, then their bad actions will not affect the ones that are in the light that come in spirit and truth that you've been elevating, right? Um... As long as somebody is doing the work, then the energy of the ancestors will stay up. All of the ancestors are not elevated. So the ones that are not elevated, that don't care about life, that's still not healed and still trapped in their worldly stuff. Because there are some ancestors that just be like, they was like this in life, they like this in death. Those are the ones that's going to be over there fucking with them. It ain't going to affect them. They're going to stay nice and low with them. They're going to be over there doing all of the dumb bullshit with no guidance and all of the backwards information and just let's see what's going to happen type of shit with them. But they know better than to try to bring that over to you. Why? Because you've been elevating yours. You got some strong ants. You got the strong ones. You got the ones that come under light. You got the ones that are bunk them on their head if they try to come over there and they're not allowed to talk to you. And the girl didn't tell me any of that, but she told me what I already knew because you, you didn't get a reading. Um, so that's the answer about the family members and the elevation of the ancestral spirits. No, some, as long as somebody's doing it, you ain't got to worry about that. Would it be helpful if more people were living right? Absolutely. It helps the energy grow faster. It helps to elevate more. It helps make them stronger. You know what I'm saying? Just because it's just you, it may take a little bit more time or a little bit more effort. But it doesn't affect them because you're constant, you're consistent, and you're diligent in what you're doing. Right? Um, somebody asked me. Can spiritual baths be taken at any time of the night? I wash my ass whenever I feel like it. I don't care if it's 3 a.m. I don't care if it's 4 a.m. I don't care if it's 5 a.m. I don't care if it's midnight. I don't care if it's 1 o'clock. I don't care if it's 2 o'clock. If my energy feels funky and I feel like I need to cleanse myself, I'm going to cleanse myself. The clock has absolutely nothing to do with what I got going on. I could care less what time it is. 
24-7. I take a spiritual bath 24-7. I don't care what time it is. If I need to wash my ass, I'm washing my ass. Period. Y'all getting very technical. Like, it, it's, it's a bath. Clean yourself. Um... Somebody asked me, is there a way spirit can help better a relationship after they say somebody better is available or coming? If they're telling you that somebody better, if the, the, the word better, period, lets you know that this ain't the one that they like for you. You know what I'm saying? It's not that she didn't want to show her too much. It's that this person couldn't see it. Because showing her too much, she could have easily said, um, and then was it a tarot reading? A divination and a tarot reading are two completely different ball games, right? They're not the same. When I'm doing my tarot readings, I'm reading my spirit guides, right? When I'm doing a divination, there's a system that's been put in place. There's a science that's been put in Yeah, lady. There's a, I'm about to say, yeah, bitch, my bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a science that's been put in place for you to um, get information from, and this is something that's traditional that's been done over time. There's a system, there's a letter of the law that goes down, there's a old dude that goes specific to that to speak of your issue. You know what I'm saying? There's a fix if there's a problem. There's a solution, there's a resolution, there's a remedy. You know what I'm saying? When you get a divination. When you get a tarot card um, reading, they, they can give you as much as they can give you. It really depends on how, how intuitive that person is because it's intuitive readings, right? We're using our intuition and our link with our spirit guides and what they're showing us to tell you what's what. Right? So there's a huge difference between the two. Then you have, hello my love, then you have those people that study the book. Right? 92% of the people that you see on the Instagrams doing um, tarot readings have studied that book left, right, up, down, and backwards. They don't know who reads their cards. You want to know how I know that they don't read their cards? Because I'll see them pick up the cards, knock on the cards, do something like that, and it starts praying to spirit guides coming through that want me to please give us a message. What? Who are you talking to? No, ma'am. No ma'am, no ham, no Pam. I'm only talking to my guides. Mine. I know them. I know their energies. I know where they're from. I know their names. I know what they like. I know how they talk. I know who got an accent. I know who don't got an accent. I know the, 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 the. I know this one to cuss you out. I know this one don't curse words. I know this one like this to drink. She don't drink nothing. I know this one like to smoke this. This one like to smoke that. I know what my people do, what they are, who they are. I know my people. So, because I know my people and each one of them is different. Each one. When they mount me, it feels different. When they come in, it feels different. The way they come feels different. The way they speak feels different. The way they give a message is different. The words that they use is different. Because I know that when I'm doing a reading, a tarot reading, an intuitive reading, I know when y'all see me pick up a deck of cards and start flipping the cards, I know specifically who cards those are, so I know how she come through. I know when it clicks here that this is what she's saying because I know her. And I got her cards in my hand, which is her tool. And she's agreed to use this particular deck of cards when she is co communicating with me and when she's communicating with the people. This card. Only this card. If she got four decks of cards, these four is, I know I'm talking only to her. When I'm doing those cards, Nobody else is saying anything to me except for me next. Divination shells, right? Cowrie shells, Marinda Lagoon, 16 Cowrie shell divination system. Ifa divination through a babalao. Uh, a priest or a priestess of a particular Orisha Ocha or a Santaro or a Santaro or a Palero or somebody like that. That's a system. That is a tradition that has been put all together over hundreds of years. And this is based on old do. This is what is going on with you. We learn it. We know it. That's how we can tell you what's going on with you. Do you get to ask specific questions? Absolutely. Because in the beginning of the divination, we always find out who's talking today. 
It could be an ancestor. It could be an Orisha. It could be Apollo energy. It could be a, 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 a guide. It could be a, a someone that's passed that was very close with your family. It, it could be any... It, it, they, we find out who. We always know who we talking to that day when we doing that divination. You don't leave the divination and go, I don't know who um, told me this, but ex bitch, what? No, 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 you don't. I'm, get up. No, that's not how that works. Yeah, but you got to know who that belongs to who. Um, right, so about spirit helping with a relationship after they say that somebody better is available better means they don't like that person for you why are they gonna help you with this person why for what why would they help you my ring fell out why would they help you with somebody when they said that somebody's better for you you have certain guys that'd be like oh i mean i could try to keep it smooth over there while you're there but you don't really need to be there so do you think that they're really giving up the type of energy that you need it ain't about saving a relationship because it's really based on what y'all got going on and clearly something's not meshing with, with y'all energies, right? Clearly this was a, a, a season and not a lifetime that you were supposed to be with this person. You can't, just because it's something that you want does not mean that it's something that you need. Spirit is going to give you what you need over what you want 99.9999999999% of the time. So, if my spirits tell me, there's somebody else better for you. You think I'm going to go say, oh, but could you help me with this one? They be looking at me like, I'll knock all this shit over because you're not listening. But why is he irking you? Irking you how? He giving you something that you're not used to? A lot of attention? Being respectful? Not talking to you crazy? You're not healed enough for him. Don't hurt him. You know what I'm saying? They give you some people sometimes to show you what you're supposed to have had, what you could have. But you got to be in the process of healing or already healed so that you don't take that baggage into that next relationship and fuck that man's life up. He's coming to you genuine. He's coming to you authentic. He's being an asshole, but they're telling you that he's good for you. I need to know what the... um. What the cards are saying Maybe you misinterpreting them Because ain't no way He's being not good to you And they telling you He's good for you That makes no sense None at all At all Um So no I wouldn't bother my spirits Asking them to help me With somebody That they don't told me that Somebody else Um Better is on, on my way On the way I'm clearing the way so that that, that that new person could come on through. You know what I'm saying? I don't want no barriers or blockages or barricades. I'm preparing myself. I'm healing. I'm letting them know that I'm open. You got to be open to receive, right? Sometimes you got to let go. But what they tell you, when you're holding on to a rope too hard, that rope will burn and cut your hand. But if you let go of the rope, you don't hurt yourself. Stop holding on to ropes that's only twisting you up because you get hurt in the end. If it ain't what it is supposed to be, if it's not giving what it's supposed to be giving, then give it up. How about that? So the man was coming in all that, and I was like, whatever, because I'm not looking at her. So he was going to come in my shop the first week, and he did. Yeah, coming for what, though? He's coming for what? Somebody asked me um, what goes in a spiritual pot. I don't know what a spiritual pot is. Um, who's the pot designated to? What energies, right? When we have pots, depending on the system that we're in, or depending on who the pot is, you gotta know who the pot is for, right? You gotta know who the pot is for. You're not ready for marriage, so I need to see you got off of here. I gotta know what was real because they could have been saying that he is married. Is he married? Because ain't no way you telling me that this person is coming in and they're nasty and they're rude and they're not about me and they're not coming in with the right energy and I'm supposed to marry them. First of all, you're not even ready for marriage. That's number one. What muerto? Is it your ancestors? Is it for um, your madamas? Is it for Paolo? Is it for who's the pot designated to? Whoever the pot is designated to, there's a list. That we go off of that tells us the specific things that could possibly go in this pot. 
Once we got this list, we then do a divination, not a tarot card reading, to talk to that energy to find out what of these items do you want in this pot. Sometimes they will say, everything that you can find on that list, put it in this pot. However, these are the basic necessities. And then, the pot must be prepared. And then, it has to be prepared. Right? You have to ask all of the questions. You remember when you get a pot, right? If it's done correctly, the things that are in this pot helps the energy work, right? Helps the energy protect you. The tools that are in there are used to, to fight in the spiritual and this earthly realm for you behind the scenes. Everything that's in that pot serves a purpose. It has to be something that this energy wants or needs or uses to work, right? There will be a time sometimes where you've done everything and after the fact, they're like, now add this. You can't just go get that item and stick it in the pot. That same item has to be um, prepared before it goes in the pot. So it depends on the energy that the pot belongs to. A, what goes into it. B, how it's prepared. C, um, um, how do you incant, you know, everything is an incantation, right? In most African spiritual traditions. Um, I, in the, you, if you go back to the beginning of this video, I gave specifics on stuff that you could do at your windows and doorways and all that other kind of stuff, um, for protection of your space. Um, and then one of the things I always tell everybody to do is to have a glass of water, a fresh glass of water with camphor by your front door. And weekly when you change in your bovid or your altars or whatever, you change the water. That camphor does not melt out in a week. You take the camphor out, you clean the glass, you refill the glass, you put the camphor back in. When it finally melts away, then you put a new camphor in there. However, you don't leave that same dirty water there week after week after week. That water must be refreshed. Your doorway has to be refreshed. Um, so... That was the question about the spiritual part. Somebody asked me, what does a root worker do? Well, it's in the name. They work with roots, right? They work with herbs. They um, work with um, the healers, the conjurers. Um, they potions, spells, all of that kind of stuff. That's what a root worker does. That's, that's the basic frontline explanation on what a root worker does. Now, there's a lot of little in, interest, interest, intricate intricate details in that that spans out but that's the core of what a root worker does right if they choose to work in the light they're working in the light if they choose to work left hand shit they work in left hand shit all that but those are the things that they're using and that's how they work in that's what a root worker does um they work with spirits you know what i'm saying um can a, person, can a person prepare their own doll? If the energy that the doll belongs to says it's okay, then yes. Again, it's not about what we want to do. It's about what they said to do. If, if you're told that you have to get a specific um, representation from one of your guides, you ask them, can I make it myself? Sometimes they'll say yes. I've had plenty of people when we're doing divinations and we're figuring out who their spirit guides are and we're figuring out what they need, they be like, um, do you have to make it? I'd be like, I'll ask. I'm asking. I'm not just trying to get money off y'all. If they say yes, I'd be like, they say yes. You can make it yourself. Some people got that ashe and that connection with spirit that they hands and they all it takes is this and this for them to sit there and the spirit's energy is going to come to that and work with that because that's how that person's ashe. That's how that person's gifts come. You know what I'm saying? You have to ask the energy. They are gonna tell you yes or no. Period. It ain't no guessing or none of that kind of stuff. It's for her. Ask her. She gonna tell you. Um. Why is it when, and, and this is one of the other questions that I got. Why is it that when they say um, work with your muertos and you ask for clarity, they say, you know, you're asking, is this your ancestor or spirit guide? And they say, just work with your muertos. That means they don't know. When you're getting a divination, you ask these questions. Who here? You know what I'm saying? Work with them how? Right? You should be doing daily prayers. You should be doing connection with your spirits and all that other kind of stuff. But if you don't know who your spiritual court is, if you don't know who your guides are, you don't know how to work with them. So you got to find out who's here. 
There's been plenty of times that somebody has been like really new at their walk and they're thinking they got all these spirit guides back there. And when I ask the question, is this a spirit guide? They be like, no. I be like, are there any spirit guides stepping forward to be recognized at this time? They be like, no, we're not letting nobody out right now. She got to deal with us. Who's us? Ancestors and ancestors alone. It's me and you, baby. Your bloodline is the only one that wants your attention at this time. They're the only ones that's being allowed near you at this time. They're not opening the door for nobody else. Why do they do this? Because sometimes you guys don't do enough to know your ancestors. And you haven't practiced or done anything where energy is concerned that you'll be able to handle what's coming next. They need you prepared for this stuff. That's why it's step by step, bit by bit, so that you learn that when they do let one out, you, you're ready for the commitment. Because it's a commitment that you're dealing with. These spirits will f walk the fuck away from you. Let you not be doing what you're supposed to be doing. Let you continue ignoring them. Let you keep going against what they're saying. Let you keep doing everything you want to do and none of what you're supposed to be doing. They will walk the fuck off. I mean, look, I'm not doing this. That's not, that's not what I signed up for. They will bounce on you. You don't want them to bounce on you. Your ancestors will turn their back on you if you're doing a bunch of dumb shit out here too. Y'all think just because, oh, it's my bloodline, they gone. No. No. I've seen plenty of people ancestors step all the way back and cross their arms and be like, let that bitch catch what she going to get because she don't listen. And I'll be like, I, she said no. <laughs> And I don't want no parts of her nose. That's for you and you alone, my love. Facts. Nobody cares about what y'all want. Nobody cares about nothing except for you getting your life together and you doing what's supposed to, you're supposed to be doing for you and your elevation. We are here to learn, grow, and elevate. That is it. If you ain't learning, if you ain't growing, you ain't healing, and you ain't elevating, then what use do we have for you? Your energy is funky and rancid, and it ain't going to help charge us. We don't need that. We already do what we're supposed to do. We we on the other side. We 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 vibrating on the right frequency. We need you to meet us where we at. We're not meeting you where you at. That's not how this works. I'm not coming, and that's how that's how y'all supposed to be acting with the people in your lives. I'm not meeting you where you at. You meet me where I'm at. I'm over here doing the right shit. So if you have the desire and the will and the fortitude to do better, I fucks with you. When you decide that that's not what you want, I'm not fucking with you. Your ancestors operate just like that. They will keep you alive until keeping you alive is pointless. You can't be out here hurting people. And I mean deliberately hurting people. Deliberately fucking with people because you're hurt. Just putting that nasty energy out into the world. They'll be like, you better go ahead with that. Um... So you need a divination, the person that asked that question, to find out who's in your spiritual court. Or Amisa. You know what I'm saying? Amisa, a spiritual investigation. Amisa. Or a divination to find out these specific questions. When we do these Misas, it is a spirit. We call it in the gods and the ancestors to talk to us. About you. Your life. Who's here? What you got? What you need? What you supposed to be doing? That's the purpose. So you pick your poison, you know what I'm saying? But don't go getting this stuff and then not doing what you're supposed to be doing because that's a problem. If we say in this tradition, don't open that door if you're not ready for what comes from the other end of that door because it's a sacrifice that you are making. What is my responsibility in this? What is required of me in this? If I open this door, whatever comes from behind that, I gotta be, I gotta do what I'm told. Period. If I'm not doing what I'm told, then what was the purpose of opening that door? Pissing off your spirits? And then you wonder why your life is fucked. It's, it's you. Ain't nobody else. Just you. Just you. If you are the source, your source is shaky than a motherfucker. Light dim and blinking. Nah. That's not how that's supposed to go. Um... Somebody asked me, why do some baths smell bad on a person and good on another? So I laughed at this one because, like, what? Then I was thinking, some colognes and perfumes smell good on somebody's skin and then bad on somebody else's skin. It happens like that. I've smelled it. I'd be like, that does not smell good on me. That does not smell good on you. I don't like, you know what I'm saying? 
Um, but the question that I was being asked was, well, who made the baths? And I'm like, I don't know, they ain't say. And they're like, well, was this bath made specifically for that person? And I was like, I don't think so. You know what I'm saying? Who made these baths and was this bath made specifically for that person? Everybody can't make baths for everybody. If it doesn't agree with them, and especially your sense of smell um, is heightened to say that that doesn't smell good on you, first of all, what was in this bath? Is it even what was prescribed to help this particular person? Some people can't take the same herbs other people can take. For instance, some people can't clean or have been told that they shouldn't clean with a spanta muerto because it'll push their muerto away. I clean all the time with that shit. That don't push my muerto away. That's not how I come. I can use anything underneath God's green sun or God's green earth to clean myself with. It doesn't matter. That's how I come. Right? But a white bath, right? So, milk. Who made the bath? Was it made for that person? What were you saying over the bath when you were making it? And what perfumes did you use in it? Those are the things you have to... It's like a process of elimination. There's something in that bath that does not agree with him. What is it that wrung out into your nose? What is it, what is it a, like a sour smell? If it was a sour smell, what kind of milk did you use? And did you put this over his... It, 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 what kind of milk did you use? What made it white? And what was the perfume that you put in it? And is he sick? Like, medically... The milk turned bad, cold milk. This is the thing about adding milk to a bath. If you're going to do, um, like, the last thing you should add is the milk, right? If the milk is in the refrigerator and it's cool, you make the bath regularly. And right before you take your bath is when you should be pouring some of the milk into it. You don't want to put um, the milk and let the milk sit in the bath that sits in the refrigerator for a couple of days. That's not how I do my milk baths. People, some people do it differently, but I don't give it a chance for the milk to turn sour. Meaning, I make the bath. The milk is the last thing. Right before I'm about to take the bath for the number set of days, I'll take the receptacle, I'll put it in something, another bottle, and then I'll add the milk to it at that time. Put the milk back in the refrigerator, put the regular bath back in the refrigerator. I don't put the milk in and just leave the milk condensed in the solution in my refrigerator. Also, the reason I asked was he ill is that he has something more going on that this bath is not helping it's, it's taking some of the stuff off, but he needs a little bit more than just what this bath is going to offer to him. Um, if you know somebody, like he needs, he really should, when, when we're dealing with health and people's lives, Ifa all day is what I'm going to say. You know what I'm saying? Unless you know a paleto or a paleta that can give you a palo reading, then you go with them because they be knowing some shit. You know what I'm saying? But Ifa all day. Um, to get a divination to find out what needs to be done with your dad and ask him the specific questions about his health, the specific questions about his diagnosis, the specific questions about his course of treatment, his course of action, and what can be done, if anything, to help him. Because he needs help more than just on, like, when we have medical stuff that's being done. You think we don't go to our, our spirits and be like, yo, such and such is about to do X, Y, and Z. I call in all my peoples, my doctors. I got Risha's that do this medical. You know what I'm saying? You got your muerto that's in the medical field. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the spirit guides. You know what I'm saying? So you need to um, figure that out when it comes to healing work, what's most effective bath, lamps, etc. Healing, what kind of healing? There's differences. Like, each case may require something completely different. The baths are for cleansing your energy regardless. So you should be, the person should be bathing anyway, right? That's hands down, it, that's always part. step one, clean your ass, right? Step two, if there's a lamp, a, 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 a limpia that needs to be done or a lamp that needs to be done. And when you say a lamp, I'm assuming that you mean something that, because when we do lamps, we do lamps a little bit different depending on who it's going to, right? Physical body healing specifically. 
not neither of those for physical, right? Physical means that there's a there's a condition, right? So for that, I wouldn't think that a bath or a, a lamp is going to do anything. That needs more. That needs stronger energies, right? You need an Arisha. You need a, a, a Palo Nkisi. Um, you need um, um, something like that for medical, physical medical, or Reiki master. You know what I'm saying? Or shaman. Those types of people, they deal with the full brunt of energy healing, right? They deal with the full brunt of earth healing. They deal with the full brunt of all of that. You need something stronger than just a lamp. A lamp is basically lighting the way, like, so I'll go back a few years, right? And my first ultra house, my second ultra house, um, they, she would show you how to do certain lamps for Oshun, right? Where you would get a pumpkin, you fill it with the oil, you put her stuff inside of it. They have those floating wicks. We would light the floating wick and do it like that. That's for people when you're trying to conceive or you had some type of uh, um, issues in your, your fertility or your woman areas or something like that, right? That takes care of a little bit of it, right? The lamp, right? Who's the person that the lamp is lit to? Oshun. So who's the person that's doing the work? Oshun. Why did you like the lamp? Because Oshun told me to. Feel me? It's not just you're doing it and there's no energy that's coming behind that to say, now I'm going to use this and push to do what I need to do back here. Feel me? It ain't just that. When we do um, um, a wands, with like Babaluaye, hey Stoney, with Babaluaye or with like um, um, Olokun, um, the Awan is a, it's a cleansing, right? We're using all of the items that's going down there to cleanse, right? We're taking it all off of the person, the people that's there to do the cleansing. We're putting it in the place for Olokun or, or Babaluaye to take. That shit is tied up by the two people that ain't got to worry about that kind of stuff, picking it up, and, and then it's a ceremony that's done with it, and then it's taken, and it's discarded, and then who takes that stuff? Olokum or um, Babaluaye, depending on who the Awan was for. There is always an energy, a spirit, an Orisha, somebody that's behind it that says, I got it from here. Right? Even in Reiki, um, if you have a Reiki master or a shaman that does that kind of work, your muerto, your just your ancestors um, will step forward to help clean, right? Your indios will step forward to help clean. There's always a spirit back there that got to say, "I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take it." Yeah, yeah, every time, every time, you are a mere mortal. You know what I'm saying? You are mortal. You are spirit first, but you are mortal. And you don't know, this is spirit energy that's being removed. So a spirit has to come back there and take care of that for you. It ain't you. I'm, I'm, they're using my hands. They're using my, my avatar. They're using my vessel. But in the background, if I look over there, I see movement. It ain't me. What am I doing with this shit? You ask, you ask me when I'm, I be like, I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> Even when mounted and cleansing somebody while mounted by spirit, you think that when that spirit leaves, I, first of all, when it gets to that point, nine times out of ten, I don't remember the whole thing, right? When they've taken what they've taken, I don't know what they took until they be like, it was this, 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 or this, or if they let me get a peek to see something, or the people in the room tell me, nah, son, you did this, 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 and this. I'd be like, I don't know. It's straight up a spirit. I'd be sitting in the background like, it's them. It is not us. So we have to get out of the idea of we are the biggest and the baddest. No, you're not. That motherfucker standing over there is the biggest and the baddest. Give them their props. Because it's them. All them. All praise due. You saw aliens the other night. Hi, what's, what's an alien to you? Um, somebody said that they have been having sex in their dreams and how can that stop? I got questions. Is the person that you, is the is it the same person that you're having sex with each time? That's the first question. The second question is: Are you sexually frustrated? When's the last time you cleansed yourself? Um. What is that sexual energy 
I need to know more about. I need. I got a, a gang of questions. It is not normal to be having sex dreams every night. No, it's not. So something's happening. Something's happening. Um, I hope that someone's not working you because it is very possible. If it is the same person over and over and over again, I'm going to tell you, you want to clean yourself because I'm going to say that, that somebody may be trying to pull you to them. Right? Um, if you are feeling unfulfilled, you need to find something that fulfills you. Um, were you high? And where were you? Where'd you see it? What was it doing? Were you awake? Or were you sleeping? There are a lot of uh, things that walk this plane that we don't know what it is. And it can try to make itself look like any given thing underneath the sun. So what was happening that this thing popped up? I hope it wasn't in your house. Um, somebody asked me, how many times should you do a cleansing bath following a sweet bath but that's backwards first of all hey Genji um, that's backwards first of all because you're supposed to take the cleansing bath before you take the sweet bath right whatever number of days you took the cleansing bath for you really should do is balanced right everything in, in life in this universe and your makeup your everything is balanced it's a 50 50 right it's, it's, it's got to balance out right so if you do a, a cleansing bath for five days and you should do a sweetening bath for five days Cleanse first, then sweeten. You can't put on clean drawers and not wash your ass. So you clean it off first, and then you put on clean drawers. Meaning you do the sweetening after you do the cleansing. Whatever number of days you did one is the same number of days you do the other, and we do those things in odd numbers. Um, that's crazy. You need to clean your house. You need to smoke out your house. And did you ask who are you and how do you come, or did you just... Um, Look up, you see this green thing standing over you, and that's the end of that. Who the fuck is that? Who are you, and how do you come? What did you do when you saw that? That's problematic, my love. That's a problem. Your ancestors don't come to you green. Look like no alien. Who's cleaning you with a cow's tongue? Remember, when you start going into these veins... Of using something like a tongue. What spirit is using this cow tongue to clean you? M me, myself, when I clean myself, if I'm using a cow tongue, I know who would use this. I know who I'm asking to say, I'm going to use this tongue, lick me clean. You know what I'm saying? But I know who's doing it. Who? You got up and did what? Did you smoke out your house? Did you ask who is it? Was they just standing over there looking at you and never saying nothing? It asked you for help? Yeah, you bugging. Everything needs to be cleaned, including you. The dogs, the cats, the kids, everybody. Whoever's in that house needs to be cleaned. And clean that house out. Make sure you hit them corners and them closets, honey. When we hide north up in here, no holes, no holes. Um, somebody asked me about their warriors. Do they are they supposed to clean them every Monday? And what do you use? Hell no. Let me try to clean my um Allegra every Monday. He will fight me down. First of all, he hates. Do remember their warriors? They outside. They don't want to be clean anyway. You opened it? Please tell me that you did not, you left that box wherever it was and that you cleaned yourself immediately after. And you talked to your people because you got some hitters that was like, that, that, that you told them don't let nothing follow me home. Girl. Girl, I hope you cleaned yourself thoroughly. I hope you cleaned your house thoroughly. I hope you fortified your door thoroughly. I hope you did all of that thoroughly. I hope you went and talked to all of your people and told them, listen, my bad. That was an accident. I did not mean to open that. Make sure, yeah. No, you prayed and asked for help. Ciao. Um, 
Oh, right. So, no. Every Monday, absolutely not. I don't clean him until I can't see his face no more. <laughs> when I can't see his face, that's when I clean him because he be fighting me the whole way through. What do you use? We've been taught in the traditions that we use rum or gin to clean your warriors. We don't use soap and water. Um, you may be able to get away with some of that black soap every now, the African black soap every now and again, but they're going to fight you. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be time. Why is it when I read someone, even after talking, taking on my path, taking my path, I am completely drained? Because you don't have one. What are you wearing when you're cleaning yourself? What items have you been told to put on yourself to cover you when you're cleaning, um, reading somebody? Right? Reading people is giving of your energy. When I go live... You see all of the stuff. You, if you knew how many things I had to do before I sat here and talked to y'all, would be so. You'd be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, what the fuck? Um, it is not. You've got to do something to block your energy so that it is not being absorbed by the people that you are reading. You're giving out energy. You're using energy. Spirit is using your energy. The other person. Is siphoning sometimes they don't mean to and they don't realize it but they're pulling on your energy in that time you are going to be tired so you see all of this shit that I got on I got on stuff you can't even see how about that you've got to ask your godmother who what, what do I need to do to protect myself them spiritual belts work you know what I'm saying there's a gang of types of different spiritual belts that do spir different things where the hell were you that you saw this thing being sold and you opened it what kind of store were you in what kind of store was you in stay your ass out of them type of places that sell that kind of stuff a tooth it's a bone you know what a hueso does. Stop it. You're bugging. No, ma'am. In an ant. First of all, you ain't got no business in no antique shop. That's number one. You ain't got no business in there. Something will definitely follow you from about it. You do know that, right? You. You ain't got no business being no antique shop because we ain't got no business buying nothing from no antique shop. You don't got no business taking nothing from no antique shop home with you. It has belonged to somebody else. Somebody else has used it. You buy your stuff new. They recreate all kinds of things. With all of these movies and stuff that they're doing nowadays, I have had so many things recreated. It is not even funny. When people come here, they be like, yo, where the fuck did you get that from? I be like, yo, I found this person on such and such internet, and they make this stuff new. No. No, ma'am. Stay your ass out of there. That is not a place for us spiritual people to be at. You ever seen Annabelle? Could you please stop? Oh, shit perk up when you walk in like I'm going home with her. No, the fuck you not. No, you not. No, sir. Um. And I don't know if the person who said the thing about having sex in their dreams is male or female, but if you are, um, um, either one of y'all, y'all shouldn't be sleeping without no panties or no underwear on, especially not in this time. Y'all need to have some protection. Um, you can put a glass of water and camphor underneath your bed. Um, listen, where do you think they got that damn doll from? They don't, that doll have been all over the place. No, sir. Um. Don't sleep without no underwears on, or no underwears on, and put a, a glass of camphor and water underneath the bed. And then that person needs to do more work spiritually because there's something going on um, that they're not picking up on. That they're so vulnerable in, in in sleep time that every night you're having sex in your sleep. Hi, boy Venus. That's crazy. Very much so. Did I miss, um, thank you, baby. Did I miss anybody's questions? Let me go back. Let me see. If y'all have questions, go ahead. Feel free to ask them. Um. Yeah, 
you just gotta listen. You gotta have real knowledge if you're listening. There's nothing like being taught by spirit. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing like being um like a hag. Wait, what? A hag? Oh, a hag in your house. Oh, yeah. They do that. If you let them in, you know what I'm saying? You can't be just be open. Some people just be so open to communicate with spirit that they forget to ask, who are you and how do you come? We're not just accepting any spirit. I am, First of all, just bring me minds. Only minds. Anybody else? Back up off me. A hag is a spirit that's coming to drain you, baby. They coming to drain you. It's a very nasty energy that you don't want no parts of. And what they doing is not for, for, for the good of you. They coming to drain you. Why do certain spirits cease to visit you? Like what? What are you doing that will make a spirit want to visit you? And what was the purpose of them visiting you in the first place? And how do you know that they're not visiting you? How do you know that they're not watching you? You know how many spirits be around sometimes that I don't know until I do something like... You're not having sex dreams every night, Tisha. It's not you. It's, it's for the person who's having a sex dream every single night. And and no, if you are under some type of a spiritual attack and you're having things that are touching you um, or things like that, then no, you should not be sleeping naked. No. I no longer see my grandma in my dreams. What are you doing to elevate your ancestral spirits? And she's busy, right? She doesn't, spirits don't come to you in your dreams unless they have something to tell you. Unless there's something you need to know, if there's something that they need for you to, to understand. You know what I'm saying? They don't just be popping up in your dreams just to be there. So, what, what kind of work are you doing with your ancestors, first of all? And, um... I don't know anybody in Atlanta, baby. You clean your own head. I think I put, if it's not in my highlights, I'll do it tomorrow. You know, what are you doing? How often are you dealing with your regular spirits on a weekly basis that they have to keep waking you up from 2 to 4 a.m.? Also, if somebody is working against you and this is the time that they usually work, sometimes they'll wake you up so that you could be awake so that whatever it is that they're trying to throw at you while you are in REM sleep won't hit you. So that's a two-parter for you. You're probably not doing enough that you're supposed to be doing, and you need to be up sometimes. Hey, Jess, be kind, and Joey, how y'all doing? I'm in New York. I don't know nobody in Atlanta. Oh, y'all know me in Atlanta. <laughs> I haven't been to Atlanta in such a long time. Um, I forgot what I was saying, sorry. But for cleaning your own head, I have a, a, a thing in my um, my page with, to do a head cleaning. I saw my grandma in my dream about a week ago vividly. She's still alive, but she appeared younger in the dream. She was smiling, I think. What? How you know that was her? You have an aunt that passed? Or uh, did she have a sister that passed? A great aunt? Was your grandma a twin? Um... I don't have anything available until next month, my love. Yeah, you, Ruby. Your spirits will keep you up all night until the sun is up if you're in the warfare. That's right, because at night is when a lot of these wicked bastards be doing stuff, and they be like, you be up tonight. Don't you worry about it. It's not going to be that you getting caught out there. We're going to keep you up, and as soon as the sun come up and everything is awake again, that's when you can go and get a little bit of rest. It happens like that all the time. Okay. Are there certain stipulations Apollo priests have? Yeah, there's stipulations. There's rules, especially in Apollo. There is motherfucking rules. You get an Eta, just like when you do whatever in Ocha, and you get crowned in Ocha. After you get scratched in Apollo, after that ceremony is complete, a couple of days later, you get an Eta, which is a reading, and they run down to you your dues, and you better fucking not. Fat. 
facts. And you go against what they told you. That shit starts to drain on your life force. People think, oh, I'm a big bad paletto. I get to do whatever I want. That shit costs you. It costs. Magic does not come without a price. I don't care what you call it. Period. Um, you need to ask her which one looked like her that passed when they were about that young or that passed at birth. Or ask her, was she supposed to be a twin? Did you understand what she was trying to tell you? <laughs> when she came? Um... She's gonna tell you. Start looking through the photo albums. If she has old photo albums, and see if you see somebody. Because we always got somebody that looks just like us. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that you'd be like, ooh, that's such and such child. If, if, if my family, you, you, between my aunts and my uncles, on both my mother and my father's side, somebody look like somebody across the board. You'd be like, God damn. Are you the same person? You gotta ask, but I, I'm, I'm thinking that it is someone, um, she might have supposed to have been a twin, or she had a sibling that died, um, rather, when they were younger, they looked like they could have been twins. Probably a aunt, a great aunt. No, I don't remember her speaking, she just watched and had a pleasant expression, we all look alike, so it could have been my great grandma or her sibling. That just lets you know, though, um, wh whichever ancestor it was, if they're sitting there smiling, then that's a good dream. You know what I'm saying? That's a good um, experience to let them know that we see you and we are pleased with what it is that you, 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 you're you growing into being. You know? We're watching your growth. We're watching your changes. And um, keep that up. You know what I'm saying? If she was scowling at you, that's a problem. But if she's smiling at you nice and sweetly, you know what I'm saying? Oh, thank you, baby. I got nothing but love and gratitude for y'all, too. You know what I'm saying? If, if y'all wasn't here to listen, then I couldn't be teaching. And I'm, I appreciate that you guys are willing to listen and willing to obtain the information and ask the questions because people be scared to ask questions, which is, you know, you don't learn if you don't ask. You know what I'm saying? So if you're willing to learn, I'm willing to teach. If you're willing to ask, I'm willing to tell you what I know. You know what I mean? I realize that my experiences and the experiences that we have, good, bad, or indifferent, are so that somebody else don't have to go through what you went through or that somebody else can get the information that you learned because it's not like experience. Whew. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's like, what and what, what, we, what was I, what was my worry thinking? Yeah, being ready for the answer is absolutely the hard part because you got to take it and make different changes with your life. You know what I'm saying? It's limited time. If y'all don't know it, it's almost, it'll be winter again. It'll be 2023 before you blink another eye. You know what I'm saying? This shit is speeding past. And while this energy is moving so fast, this quick change is the time for you to jump on that bandwagon and get it going because the energy is pushing us right now. You know, with all of the adversaries and all of the things and all of the, because the I keep telling y'all that every time you think that there is a slight breath, just wait for it's the calm before the storm and this is not to have y'all fearful but to have you prepared because if you got a raincoat and rain boots and you solidified your household then you know that when the storm comes you're not going to be affected like the person who hasn't prepared it's not even going to feel the same to you you'll be like oh i was in the house chilling i ain't even know x y and z why because you have prepared for the storm that's coming where those who are still asleep ain't preparing 
Spirit wants y'all to be prepared. Y'all guys and y'all ancestors want y'all to be prepared. We're living in a time right now where we are not being ostracized and murdered and killed and all of that for practicing our spiritual um, faith and our spiritual traditions, right? So this is the time to grab onto your tradition and work with that so that you have the cheat codes to life. I need the cheat codes. Where I'm going? Where I'm supposed to be doing? How? Somebody show me. They're willing. They're able. You're willing. You're able. All you got to do is sit down somewhere and do. You can't use prayer to substitute for discipline. You can't just be praying and not moving your ass. You are the source. You are connected directly to the universe. It responds to you. What you put out, you get back. So if you're not doing nothing, you're not getting nothing. I don't care how many hours you sit at an altar and pray. You can do that, right? Now when you get up from that altar, what are you doing? Have you figured out anything about the herbs? Have you figured anything about the guides? Have you learned anything about their stories that helps you to heal? Because throughout all of this, it doesn't matter what level you've reached in your spiritual walk. There are levels to healing. And just when you think that it's all said and done, they're going to hit you with another one that you didn't even know was there. The subconscious mind and the conscious minds are two completely different ball games, baby. And once you start to wake up consciously, that subconscious starts to kick in and remind you of the stuff that you done buried deep. Because you got to heal that. You got to address that. You got to make peace with that. And then you got to release that. That's how you go to the next level. That's how you're able to help somebody else. Because they're going to ask you, well, how did you do that? You'd be like, bitch, I cried for 30 days straight first. <laughs> that was the first part. Bitch, I was crying. Then I said, let me stop crying. And I said, let me go clean myself. And then I cleaned my house. And then I said to myself, well, let me figure out what this person was going through and how did they put so much on me. And then I say to myself, well, it was me who allowed it because I had all of these different chances to change it, to stop it, to leave, to move, to all of that stuff. So now I'm learning discipline. I'm learning discernment. I'm learning when to let go. I'm learning what um, toxic energy breathes. I'm learning what sometimes things are for reasons and seasons. I'm learning not to hold on so tight. I'm learning all of these things about myself that's going to help me with my next portion of my life because I'm not going to make the same mistakes again mistakes come up and these tests happen so that you learn and you sharpen your skills a boxer does not just get into the ring and knock out the first opponent absolutely not he got to learn how to breathe he got to learn how to use his feet he got to use work, learn how to work on his breath all of that kind of stuff his combos he got to guard his grill all of that kind of stuff you don't just come into spirituality being the queen the high priestess. Bitch, go sit down. They can tell you that you're supposed to be a great many things. But what are the steps that I need to take to actually reach that plateau? Did you ask that? No. You just heard I'm going to be a priestess and you was running around talking about priestess such and such on your Instagram account. And now you out here looking stupid. And that's not how that works. You have the ability to be a great many things. Now let's find out what we have to do to get there. Because if you're willing to put in the work, then that's, they're telling you that that's what's in your future. If you're willing to, to, to sacrifice a few things, they're telling you that you can have all of this. But nothing comes without sacrifice of something. Energy is the main part. You can't be putting your energy into bullshit Monday through Friday. And on Saturdays and Sundays, you call yourself a witch. Go sit down. You're a mere mortal. You are not a weekend witch. There's no such flower. Ain't nobody backing that. Ain't no spirit guide backing that. Ain't no ancestor backing that. I'm a weekend witch. Everybody won't call themselves some kind of witch. A weekend witch. Then put that shit on your profile. Ain't nobody trying to hear that. Don't be trying to give that. Questions? Anybody? I miss y'all. I've been trying to come and get over here and talk to y'all for the longest. I have had so much stuff going on. It's not even funny. The um, service was canceled today, so I had a chance to come and sit down and talk to y'all. I was so happy when that service got canceled. Oh, my God. Y'all don't even know. There was a party going on. I was like, thank God. <laughs> <Bye. Bye. laughs>
That's another thing. Y'all can't um think that the if you're living a, a ratchet lifestyle and you're living a scammer's lifestyle and you're living a hurt everybody's lifestyle and you hot girl summering it and hurting people and hurting people's feelings and not being honest and you just handing out hurt and bullshit energy left and right. And you come to a diviner and they tell you you got to pay for such and such and such. You can't buy your way out of that. I don't care who said what. If spirit said you're going to have to do X, Y, and Z and you don't do X, Y, and Z, you are not getting out of that situation. You are adding and piling on to your bullshit. That means you're only hurting yourself. I'm estranged from my eldest daughter. She calls toxic. How do I heal this relationship? She calls you toxic? There's a, um, a head wash recipe. I think it's in my highlights. Um, I think I, it's a, it is in my highlights. I put it in there last week. So there's a good recipe for head washes. There's two in there actually. One I did a video and then one just has the ingredients um, for a head wash. Why is she calling you toxic though? Are you Have you been toxic? Be honest. Think about your relationship with her. Is she your oldest daughter that you did a little bit of growing up with her? That you weren't so much of a mom to her? our own ritual ceremonies with proper research and learning of course our spirits will be on board the, the ritual has to be in accordance with something that they gave you you're not creating your own ritual you're doing things led by spirit so the spirit is giving you the ritual your spirit guide is telling you what it is that you need to do um, she may not feel that way though so you need to sit her down and have a conversation with her to figure out what is it that see this is the thing about and I don't have children but I do have a mother let me go there and I do have a grandmother and I do have aunts and all that other kind of stuff and it was a point in my life with them that we had to sit down and have some real heart to heart conversations where my elders was like tell me tell me just I'm ready just I'll eat it just give it to me and I had to tell them all the shit that I ain't like all this shit that I felt was some bullshit. All this shit that I felt that they could have did better. All this shit that I needed and they wasn't able to provide. And da -da 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 -da. Give them the opportunity to explain to me what was going on in their head at that time. You know what I'm saying? Children don't understand what be going on with the with their parents sometimes. And it takes dialogue for y'all to get through that. So it's going to... And you're going to have to eat whatever she says. She's not allowed to be disrespectful though. Right? But you can't come back everything that she says there's truth to what she says you can't discount count how she felt in that moment of whatever your actions were or were lacking at and then you have to apologize for the parts when you sit with it to say i, I could have did that differently if that was me how would i have felt if somebody did that to me today would i be okay with that and the answer is gonna be no yeah i did you think i did so one of them was in tears and she ate it. You know what I'm saying? But it was truth. And I couldn't do nothing but tell the truth and express how I was feeling. And I, I'm very well at articulating myself. So it wasn't a you, 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 you. It was I felt. This is how this made me feel. When you did X, Y, and Z. And I got a fucking memory like nobody's business when it comes to that kind of shit. That, 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 that. Do you see how that could have made a child who needed X, Y, and Z? Do you see how that could have made it more if I would have X, Y, and Z, if you would have X, Y, and Z? That type of conversation, like straight, straight, straight. And then you got to be open to receiving whatever it is that she says. And don't listen, just, you got to listen, listen. You got to listen, listen. You got to listen, listen. Because she going to be pouring her heart out to tell you, what it is and you gotta tell her don't hold nothing back but don't be out here calling me bitches and stuff like you be respectful when you talk to me but express yourself you know what I'm saying um Starts getting their act together with the answers and space so I'll back to them myself and for her um But what was the last straw 
that she said, I'm done with you. Because you're leaving a lot of stuff out. You know what I'm saying? She didn't just wake up one day and say, you know, I'm not fucking with my mother. There was something that happened. It was a catalyst that happened that she was like, all right, I'm done. See, sometimes if they've asked for things over the years and you haven't been willing or able to look at yourself and say, I might really need these changes, they'd be like, I'm off you. And some of them are not going, and I'm talking about our, our relatives, children, whoever. They're not willing to um, hear you because when they were ready, you weren't ready. But now that you're ready, you expect her to be ready. So tell her, to, she, she can write you a letter. You know what I'm saying? Ask her to write you a letter. Take it to the ancestors and ask them for their assistance in helping y'all mend your relationship. But you need to sit down and take a cold hard look at everything that she said to you and the reasons why she's saying them. And look at you and see, what could I have changed? What could I have done? What should I have done differently? And then you apologize to her and bring up those things and be like, I know when this happened, I could have done X, Y, and Z differently and I didn't. And I'm sorry. You got to be willing to, and able to apologize. And then... Why doesn't she articulate her feelings? What was it in her upbringing that she doesn't understand that? Because that means that you didn't teach her that. That means that you either you didn't teach her that or she didn't feel comfortable enough or she didn't feel safe enough or she felt like she would be um, um, uh, reprimanded for her honesty. And did you teach her financial literacy? Is that something that you taught her? Were you always taking care of everything and she was spoiled to the point that she didn't know nothing and you didn't bother to teach her nothing? You know what I'm saying? We parents would come in at the ninth inning and be like, oh, you should do this, 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 and that. But you should, should have taught me about this. It's all cause and effect, no matter the time or age. That's right, Genji. It's all cause and effect. You can't be never teaching her responsibility financially and then now that she's an adult she do something stupid and you tell her you should have did this but you never taught me that. Ever. Where was I supposed to learn this? They don't teach it in school. I'm a strong personality. My frustration came off. I taught her financial literacy. But listen, she's an adult, right? Your strong personality means that that ain't working where she's concerned. So, honey on your tongue before you speak to her to sweeten your words. A lot of rose quartz to, to heal yourself um, and your energy where love is concerned. And um, you need a lot more sweetening baths. You, you probably do the cleaning, but you don't do enough of the sweetening to sweeten your disposition and your energy and your demeanor. Um... And then, when they don't listen, you let them bump their heads. Some people need to learn by their experiences. Good, bad, or indifferent. And she may very well be one of those people. Thank you, Tisha. That's why parents lead by example. So... Saying that I, I was this type of person and like teaching financial literacy is not just watching me be able to maintain my bills and always have a place to stay and all of that kind of stuff. Like when they had an allowance, did you teach them to save, right? Did you open a bank account for them? Did you teach her how to balance a checkbook? Did you teach her how not to borrow from Peter to pay Paul? Meaning not a bunch of credit cards used for this, that, and the third, all of that kind of stuff. If you didn't have the money, did you teach her how you got to go and hustle to get the money? And when I say hustle, I mean working extra hours, doing certain things, cooking, cleaning, hair, clothes, what, nails, whatever black, you know, we as melanated folk find a way to get some coins, but legally, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's how you teach someone financial literacy. You explain to them credit cards. What's the interest rate on this credit card? That shit is wild. 20 something percent, 19 percent, 15 percent, 10. Those are too high rates on interest on credit cards. That's, this is financial literacy. You know what I'm saying? Like life.
Yeah, you gotta, you have to, and practice. You know what I'm saying? Practice the conversation by yourself in the mirror. And when it sounds crazy coming out your mouth, change it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that sounds crazy. She might take it this way. You know, the, you know your audience. So you know trigger words. You know trigger energy. You know what's gonna trigger her to tell her, make her sh shut it up, shut down the receptivity of what it is that you're saying and or giving. That is what you're saying. To her, you weren't there. Kids don't understand that. So until you tell her physically you was unable to do why? Mommy was fucked up in the head. Mommy was fucked up because of this. Nobody taught mommy. Mommy was in bad situations. Mommy was this, 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 and this. And I was not able to do X, Y, and Z because mentally I couldn't take it. I couldn't handle it. I wasn't strong enough. Whatever the reasons are. You understand? So that's what you're saying. Her perception is com something completely different. And until you get her to tell you what her perception was, you're standing on the side of saying, I wanted to, I was trying to, but I couldn't. She sees, you just didn't. She don't understand your, your reasons. This is why I tell y'all all the time, when y'all dealing with these ancestors, y'all gotta know their stories. Y'all got to know why they did the things that they did, the situation that they was put in, what happened to them, all of that. They, until you understand that about your people, and th that's how you can understand how people relate to you. Because you'll hear, I've heard plenty of stories about certain members of my family that are dead, that were this crazy cracker barrel, right? crazy cracker barrel and when I got to the bottom line that I started speaking the spirit and they started telling me but well, this is why I was like that this is what happened to me this is why I was angry this is why I was cruel this is why and then you see what happened to them you like that's fucked up nobody heard their story nobody took the time to ask them why nobody no, no attention was given to their feelings nobody validated them nobody none of that so that made them turn into the person that they was because nobody taught them nothing else now the other parts members of the family spiritual in light good people all that they don't have nothing to do with that other person they path with something else they pain with something else the way that they dealt with it was something else. The way that they handle it was something else. Their ability to handle it was something else. Individuals all feel, perceive, felt things differently, reacted differently, caused a different reaction. All of that. All of that. So we have to know and be open to hear and listen and understand and empathize. Not sympathize, empathize, empathy. If you are empathic and you ain't got no empathy, then you need to sit down. Because that's part of the word. I wish I knew my mother as a woman and not just my mother. Yeah, it would have explained a lot of things and helped you to relate to her a lot differently. When I understood... Um, like elders in my families and their stories that helped me to help me to relate to them a lot differently We can live multiple different realities at the same time and then depending on who you're dealing with Depending on what they got going on in their life depending on what's going on in their head What's going on in their heart? You know what I'm saying? So it is in empathizing and understanding so you, you have to always be able to say you know what I, I, I see what you're saying You ain't got to agree with the way that they did anything but I understand it. I can completely understand that. Do I think it was wrong? 1,000%. Would, would I do it again? Absolutely not. Would I ever do that? Hell no. But I understand how you could. Now, do you understand the, rep the repercussions of all of what you did? That's when we sit down and do our self-assessment. That's the healing. That's the fixing. That's the growth. That's the elevation for self. That's why we're here. To polish up on our tools. Our life skills. This is the marketplace. We come here to shop, shop 
and then sharpen up our tools, our knowledge bank, our experience levels, what we can handle, what we can think through. All of this is, 90% of spirituality is thinking about it. Good. Then this should be confirmation um, that you will be heard, but you got to be ready for what comes after that. You got to be ready for what comes after that. But you have to tell her that, you know, I need you to just tell me. Mommy's listening. Mommy loves you regardless of anything. I brought you into this world and I will love you way beyond the time of me leaving this earth. And I will always be here for you in flesh and in spirit. But I need you to talk to me because I love you and I don't want to lose you. And I'm sorry for whatever it is that I did, but I need you to tell me so that I know, so that I can acknowledge your feelings and I can apologize to you because I didn't mean it. And it wasn't something that I wanted to do, but this is where we are. So what do we do next? I'm willing to do whatever it takes to go from here. And then do it. You're welcome, baby. Got to. I had a, a family member who had surgery not that long ago, and I've been taking care of them. So um, they have just been. I'm retired, so I'm home. The only one in my family that, that don't work uh, nine to five. So they were just so grateful to me and just expressed that to me, and it made me feel good because it's like um, I had to learn. Not even learn, but I was tested with my um, ability to like really help someone who can't get around, who can't do nothing for themselves. To just like care for somebody on that type of level was bananas. I didn't snap. I didn't yell. I didn't just lose my patience. Like when I felt those times, I would go someplace else in another room and just like scream into a pillow or something like that. Regroup myself and come back and say, you know. You know what I'm saying? Just breathe. You know what I'm saying? Because they, they can't help it. You know what I'm saying? I had to empathize with what they were going through and their situation and their lack of being able to do what they normally would do. And so they would get frustrated sometimes too. And it's just like, listen, you can't feed into their issue. You have to empathize with them. Understand, like, yo, if I was in that situation, I'd probably would be this frustrated too ease them through that kind of shit that's a that's something that i had to learn it by being put in the center of that that i was i didn't know that i could have um had the patience for that because i'm i used to be one of the most impatient motherfuckers you ever wanted me in your life like my patience was at 24 eh, 7 but i learned patience you know what i'm saying dealing with people spiritually like this i learned patience Dealing with people's issues and their problems taught me patience. Like going into this, I didn't have no patience, but I had to learn that because they was like, nobody gonna listen to you with your impatient ass. You better go sit down somewhere. And I said, like, God, you're right. <laughs> you have to learn empathy. I gotta empathize with some of them people when back in the day, so like, fuck that and fuck them. I don't care. That's not how spirituality works. You have to be willing to change the parts of yourself that needs changing um, and bettering yourself. You know, if you can be that for somebody else that needs that, then you've helped somebody else. And that's the purpose of us spiritual teachers, preachers, leaders, whatever you call us, godparents, all of that. We have to be able to hold people's hands through stuff without smacking them in the back at the same time unless they did some real wild style shit. You can't let people trigger you or none of that stuff. I used to be triggered, but not anymore, and that irritates you. Yeah, it's going to irritate them. You know why? Because energetically, when someone's sending you negative, if someone's giving out negative energy, yeah, 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 and you don't feed into that, it's like when they tell you, don't cross your arms, don't cross your legs. You're shutting off your energy field to protect you from that energy. So when you don't feed into it, it bounces off of you back into that person. And that person gets the full brunt of what it is that they were giving out. So it makes them matter. That protects
context you. If they not giving it out, they not getting it back. But if you, if you pay attention, if you somebody hyping it up, hyping it up, and you sitting here just on some like whatever, and it's not affecting you, they only gonna get madder because what they're giving out is coming back into them. Period. Yeah. The point is that you learned it. Hard or soft. You learned it. So it won't happen again. And that's the purpose. Not letting it happen to you again. And preparing yourself. Because they will absolutely hit you with a test like that. Any given moment. Just to make sure that you still got it and you didn't forget it. Spirit love doing that. Oh my God they love doing that. They will send a test signal out in a second and you just be like, mm -hmm, I smell that shit. I know that vibration. I know that frequency. And I can see that shit coming a mile away. You keep that over there. I'm not doing that again. Nope. Nope. I'm going to sit down. Let me go meditate my my business. Yeah. Them tears were cleansing. Them tears were learning. And them tears was teaching at the same time. And once you dried your face, I bet you said, that's enough of that. That is enough of that. How did I get here? That's how I got here? I won't do that no more. Right. All of your eyes. Wide open. Please. People's words are words, but what are their energies and their actions showing you? I could care less what you told me, but I'm... Your energy say something else, but I can't help you. Mm -mm. Y'all gotta look at yourselves. Everybody is so willing to look at everybody else and point the finger. Mm, this is spirituality. Oh, y'all. Everybody want love Oshun. That mirror. Mm -hmm. What the mirror give you? A reflection. She like, look at your life. Look at you. Look at your actions. Look at your words. Look at your energy. Look at your thought process. Look at what you give to the people. Is it so beautiful or is it not? Facts. Dry eye now. I ain't closing them. That's right. You better not. Because they trying to show you something. And they talk to you. And I, you should be growing. Girl that wants to hang out with me, but my is always telling me no. Why she want to hang out with you so bad? What does she offer? What is she bringing to the table? And then how much is she trying to siphon? Get out of here! Get out of here! People like to use people as a stepping stone. No, that's how they come. It happens all the time. You know how many times that happened to me? But then people get mad when I cut them off. I'll cut you off so fast it's not even funny. Sometimes I let it rock for a little while because I just be like, this person just don't know. I give you like one or two shots after that. Mm -mm. No. Nope. She want the energy and she want that light. You already know. S -s Vampires. No. No. I'm not doing that with you. You better go find your own light. I don't got it for you. That's not why I'm here. I'm not here to be giving out my light. Letting people siphon off of my energy. People can steal your ashe. You can give your ashe away. How about that? Giving in to the wrong people. That somebody that always complaining about their life and don't ever make no changes and make the stupidest mistakes all over and over and over again. You know how many friends that I had to get rid of that was doing that shit? Spirit was like, if you don't, I was like, say less. Say less. And then when I sat down and looked at the history of the friendship, I was like, yo, that motherfucker was just straight sucking from the plug. Straight up. That desire to assist, that desire to help is a good thing to have, but you got to put it into the right people, meaning you need to learn discernment. She's always saying nobody want to hang with. Yeah, we're not hanging out. I got stuff to do. I'm not doing all the hangouts that you want to do. Yeah. No, you're not going to suck from this plug. I'm good. You got to learn your lessons, babies. You got to learn, learn the lessons and pay attention to people. Relationships should be balanced. Friends, lovers, 
and everything else. I can't just be taking, taking, taking and giving nothing. What you giving me? Somebody to hang out with? That's not giving me nothing. Yeah, no, you want, because you want to be in my videos. You want to know where the party's at. You want to know where the fun's at. You want to know how I always find these places and appear to be having fun. Bitch, if I didn't invite you, you're not going. Yeah. And I do be having fun. But you ain't coming with me, bitch. Invite me somewhere so we could be on your Instagram. How about that? What fuck you always trying to come with me for? Why you don't know nothing? You just when you're working on yourself to say I'm above that when it comes to... No! Are you kidding me? I'm above that? No. This, I am not better than nobody, but I'm too good for a lot of shit. How about that? Let's use that one. She ain't gonna do nothing but get you in trouble and be drunk. She's one of them drunks that can't handle her liquor. <laughs> you don't need nobody out here embarrassing you in these streets. Why? She's not comfortable with herself. So she wants to stand in, in your blast the light, right, to make her feel better about herself. I'm not here to make you feel better about yourself, though, because without me, then what? You low. So that means that you're drawing on everything that I'm giving out, and you're not going to see me drunk. No, you're not going to have nothing over my head. I'm going to hold my head. I realize the effect I cause peeps, the stealing of light. Yeah. No, we're not doing that. No, ma'am. No, nobody got time for that. Invite me out. You ain't got nothing? Nothing? I mean, you're not even offering me nothing. And, and if you did hang out with her, well, first of all, they done told you no already, so we finished with that conversation. It's a no. It's a no for me, boss. Mm -mm. No boss. No boss. Don't play with her. It said no, it's a no. Don't worry about her and all that kind of other stuff. Let her get her life together. Let her work on her confidence somewhere else. People show you what they want you to see so they get close enough and then try to sabotage you. You're not going to sabotage me. And you ain't going to get all up in my business. Is she nosy. Um, I made this playlist. This is my Apollo playlist off of um, YouTube. My playlist off of YouTube. Coque de Palomonte. Mayumbe. Buena Noche. That's the song playing right now. Um, what is this from? It's old. So you guys have got to remember music is a vibration and music is energy as well. She wanna do she wanna get in your business. She do. She wanna know what she she wanna because you when you post, you don't you you show you and a little bit of the background and it could be 90 people in the background with you and you would never know the way that you post and she don't know it either but she's so fucking nosy she's trying to figure out what's going on over there none of your business i also want to take a second and say thanks for being hard and rough with me you gave me fuel to understand what the fuck is going on and how i can do it oh you're welcome baby as long as you got what you needed from that you know what i mean and 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 that's just straight up my guides you know what i'm saying i thank my my, my team for being who they are and doing what they doing yeah, that's the one for uh, Egun. You call it Egun to come meet with you. Um, that's one of the songs we sing when we do auto, when we um, start off ceremonies with the ancestors. Because remember, anything you start, when you do anything Orisha related, you always start with your ancestors first. Um, I have the translation um, in a video that I posted that tells you the, the, lang um, the words in English so you know specifically what it is that you're saying um, to understand why it calls in the ancestors' energy so easily. Um, remember, everything is vibration. Everything is tonal. Everything is uh, um, uh, incantation. Songs and singings are incantations. You know what I mean? These things have been utilized for years, so it's not, these are traditional things. And when you're practicing traditions, you're following what has been tried, tested, and we know it works. 
Oh, you're welcome, baby. Um, I asked for a sign, a uh, uh, message for everyone. And it is in asking all of you to make sure that you are in alignment. Um, it says it's misaligned. So misalignment is the message, meaning you have to make sure that you are aligning yourself um, with the higher forces, the higher powers, your energies, your ancestors, your spirit guides, to make sure that you are getting uh, the knowledge, the understanding, and the wisdom. Um, it says miracles become normal once we face all of the aspects of our life in the same directions. Y'all gotta face your lives. And understand that if you don't change, then your life is not going to change. It starts and ends with you. I'ma try my love. I got no questions, but always open to whatever wisdom they wanna give. Just saying, yeah, y'all need to be in alignment. Um, y'all need to look up chakra balancing, right? Remember that our chakras are our energy forces, right? That resonates within our bodies that helps connect us to the energies and the frequencies that are in the universe, that are all around us, that we utilize, that we link to, that we uh, work from, we work through, we work with. And if we are not aligned and we are not, uh, uh, we get... People, Reiki, absolutely, who said that? Yes, Genji. Reiki, I, I, I need anybody to um, get a Reiki cleaning, a distant chronic healing, uh, uh, but you don't want these people that just started doing Reiki, like, to take nothing away from them. If you know that you have serious problems or have had serious issues, accidents, car accidents, trips, falls, traumas, right? You need a Reiki master or shaman. They are able to balance your chakras. Everything leaves a spiritual print. If you've had COVID, there are energies that are left in your body that need to be removed and cleansed. Um, and these Reiki masters, these pranic healers, these shamans are able to move that stuff. I've had I thought that was bull, but I got that disease. Nah, that shit is not bull. I have some ladies that are the truth. When I say that these heifers are the truth, they are the truth. Because not only are they, they do this work, right? I always go with people that are intuitive on top of whatever their mastery or their craft is. Because they always see a little bit more. And they always go a little bit deeper. And they're always able to tell you just some extra shit that you just be like, damn, bitch, how you see that? She be like, I don't know. Somebody came through here and told me. <laughs> I love them. You know what I'm saying? So I have even one of my Babalawas that I, when I refer people to him, he got intuition like a motherfucker. I be like, tell him that shit too. He be getting all in your business. My Reiki master, oh my God, she be in all my business. The first time I spoke to her on the phone, five minutes in, she was, she didn't even do the session yet. She was just all in my business. And I was like, sis, <laughs> what time we doing the, um, now? What, what time? Listen, I'm not scared for nobody to tell me nothing. I'm not scared. Yeah, they in New York. I'm not scared for nobody to see none of what it is that they see it. Show me, tell me. If it's a way for me to fix it, let's get to it. I don't care what it's going to take me to get it. I'm going to get it done. That's why you go into them. You got to take what they tell you. And then you got to think about it because she be picking up stuff from so many years ago that I be like, damn, how you know that? She be like, it left an imprint. And I be like, what the fuck? She be like, yeah. That's how I be knowing. I be like, yo, it's crazy that it's still picking up stuff from, um, picking up stuff from what happened I got a Babalao in New Jersey um Stony yeah I, she got she was in your business right <laughs> um now I don't know who you talking about specifically stay godly but I have my own group of um people that I work with that's part of my spiritual family um there are a lot of um, support groups 
um, and things that you'll see popping up online that's trying to get you all to kind of link with this was the women supporting women um, came up um, together we can transcend our individual limitations you think of it takes a village mentality because everybody helps strengthen one another and that's why we're here that's why I do these things because I want to help strengthen you guys spirit or something is intertwined with a 200 year old tree oh she's tapped in yeah stony she's the truth um that's 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 dope genji that's dope you know how long trees live that's knowledge that's di directly connected to earth's core it tells a story Mm. Um, I have a Babalao that's in Jersey if you want to uh, um, hell yeah fairies and stuff yes all of that all of that wow they used to have these fairies that used to be in this botanica that I used to go to Yo, they used to be in there tearing up the fucking botanica when they got bored oh my god they used to be there tearing shit up <laughs> energies out of there because baby they used to be there knocking shit off the counter all the time oh yeah I want to see that um that's got to be amazing can I DM you and you can send yeah baby I just need your um your government name when you DM me thank you my love um so yeah, you guys have got to connect with your guides, connect with your ancestors. You got to know who's reading your stuff. I still feel a tad nervous, but I feel them, but I can't see shit. Uh, why are you nervous though? We be nervous at the unknown. You know what I'm saying? And you don't, you, you, you got to stop trying to see with your human eyes and start looking with your spiritual eyes. Welcome, Sexy Serena. Um, you've got to... What is the image that popped up in your head? Because that's going to show you. When that image starts to pop up in your head and you are able to um, validate that you've seen it, that's when stuff starts to pop up other ways. However, you may not have that gift that you are supposed to see spirit, but you can feel them. That, is it nervousness or is it their energy approaching that you're feeling? You got to identify those things. It's different sometimes. You know, it's not always that you're nervous because it's nerve. It's, it's, it's the energy that you're feeling creeping up. And, and not even creeping up on, on a scary way. It's just that they're approaching, you know, and it's getting closer. So it makes you feel a certain kind of way until you get acclimated with that particular energy. Because they low people running around. I feel them, but I can't see it, so it feels like a whole bunch of fucking mosquitoes. <laughs> but you know who and what it is. That's the thing. Now you can identify it. So you know. So when they approach, you have to know what is it that they come to me for? Why are they around me? What should I be doing? What is it something that they're trying to um get me to understand the Reiki master loves singing them goes nuts when I get there yo that is hilarious and do you have a, a something set up for them in your house because if they're with you then you have to remember that sometimes you have to put little altars for them so that they have that little piece of home um because I get a little wait a minute <laughs> Yeah, I was in my bedroom. Wait, no. But I get nervous, so I look like a ghost with all the cascadilla on my body. <laughs> Yo, I can see you acting like LeBron James in the beginning of a basketball game, throwing that um, chalk in the air. Yo. Um. Yeah, so remember the little fairies. You know, they have these the little houses that have... If they have, like, a chia house... You know how they used to have chia pets? 
and you put the stuff on it and it grows the grass on the top. If they have one that's like a little house, you want to get one of those. They'll love that. Yeah, I was in my bedroom and sitting, felt some shit running across me, and I sat up in the motherfucking bed a couple of times. Oh, no. I was bugging, though. When you say running across you, my altar in my bedroom closer, so I assumed that for something to do. Oh, yeah. Um, if you don't, have, if you can get a screen to um, separate you from the, where your altar is for when you go to bed, that would be a good idea, like a screen of some sort. Nothing dark like this, but something that's lively. Um, and just put it up like you closing your door when you're going to bed. Um, so that that doesn't happen. Because they be moving. They be moving around all the time. Like spirit, and if, Especially if it's in your bedroom. Spirits just be walking around sometimes. You know, sometimes they got to go and check what's going on in the house. Perspective. Y'all have to work on y'all perspectives. Um, that was for um, Pimp Daddy. I close the closet door when I go to sleep. Right. Oh, who was it? Who was it that was flittering across you, Pimp Daddy? Y'all gotta calm and clear your minds so that y'all are free to see the differences with these energies. Um, and to, to understand the differences in the, the spirits when they are coming close to you and they are not physically manifesting themselves, but energetically you are understanding where their, um, stuff is coming in. You see, I cannot keep the bedroom closed. I can't sleep. How does this happen with these, and how does this happen with these energy? How does what happen, baby? What you mean? What you mean, my love? The three to five section, you can build a little terrarium with LED lights for the fairies. Fairies are not spirits, are they? What are they? The energies, right? They are spirits. If it lives, there's a spirit attached to it, right? Um... Fairies. Now, there's multiple different. There's different kinds of fairies, right? I po did I post this book? If I didn't post it, let me know. I have a fairy Bible, and it tells you all the different different types of fairies that they are. Because there's not just one little think a Tinkerbell. It's not just that. There's some that look absolutely crazy, right? They're not all cute and fluffy and wings and all of that other kind of stuff. You have to remember that nature has a lot of different aspects and there are energies that are in charge of different aspects of nature that were put there to protect it, to take care of it, to make sure that it flourished and all of that other kind of stuff. Not in the theoretical sense of who Osain was because he owns all of the herbs, right? But say that there was a what do you call that? Moss. Like moss. A patch of moss. Do we use moss for anything in, in, in Ocha? Not that I could think of. I've never seen it. I've never done any of that kind of stuff with any part of moss. But moss still grows, right? And it's still green. And what's green helps with oxygen and things like that, right? And it serves a purpose. So there's an energy that was in charge of taking care of that. Now, we don't cross-mingle the two, like fairies and Osai, completely two different traditions, two completely different outlooks on those types of energies, right? You don't go to Africa and you start think, hearing about Aruba and Arisha and they start talking about fairies. You won't have, it, it doesn't happen, right? But they will tell you something about who was in charge of tilling the land, who was in charge of the herbs, who's in charge of agriculture, who's in charge, all of these different aspects of earth, right?
panties. I got some reprints to make more stuff. I don't know who, but I had to do a head wash the next day. Felt like insects on my skin, but there was nothing there. I usually get hot and sweat when they're close. Was a new sensation. A couple male and female. They are the guardians of the tree. Miss for them is life, I believe. Um, it's called the Fairy Bible. It's not for children because if you open the book, it looks scary in there. So I will, I'll post. If I don't, I'm going to look on my page and see if it's, if it's not. I'll take a picture and post it tomorrow, probably. It's a thick little book. And it explains all of the different, and it's a, when I say a book is about this thick, it's about this thick. So that just lets you know how many different types of fairies that there are. How many different parts of nature it is that they dwell in and what it is that they do. Diff There's so many different ones in there. When I was looking through this book one day, I was just like, oh my God. Yes. So on my business, I bring seeds of flowers and mushrooms so they can chill. Um, you need to find out. They like other, other stuff too, though. But that's a good start. I'm not saying that that's bad. That's excellent. You bring in something. You're offering something, which is good. They acknowledge in that, you know? Yeah, you should. But one of them little um, chia houses, because it'll have the little um, plants that grow on top of the house. I don't know if I've ever seen a house one. I think I used to see them. They used to have them back in the day. And, um... Who was that store that used to be around? Oh my God, I can't think of the name of it. It's an old pharmacy. You better get you a mosquito plant next to it. Um, and then, how much mosquitoes you get? You know how many plants I got in there? Not one mosquito in there. There's no settled water. You know what I'm saying? Mosquitoes usually come with it's settled water because they lay their eggs and then the eggs hatch. So, if you don't have settled water sitting in no place, you shouldn't have a bunch of mosquitoes. And that's why I don't um, water my plants at the top. Every now and again, when the dirt looks really dry, I'll do that. But I'll use Walcott. Woolworths. Thank, that's close enough. It wasn't Walcott, but it was Woolworths. That was the store. They used to sell them chia heads and the chia plants and chia everything's in there. Um, but I was at Whole, um, Whole Foods the other day. They have all them insect repellent plants, pretty ones, for $10. Go get you a couple of those if you feel that you're going to have some mosquitoes and put them out. Or plant them because you got that garden and all of that kind of stuff. Oh, the cheese on the river, so it's bottom water. Got it. If you put one of those little ones in your house, but when they visit you, or are you only, no, because they be in your house too. They don't just be at the river. They be in your house too. I'll be freaking up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Over here by the river, there'd be a bunch of gnats. Sometimes I'll go over there. I mean, I'm talking to Chola. I'll be like, could you move your, your, your kids for a minute? And she'd be like, all right, she'd clear the space out so I can get in the water. Citronella. Yep. Citrella or something like that. They had a, a home, a Whole Foods. They got them on sale for $10. I looked at them. Friday, yesterday. I go almost daily. I didn't know this. Yeah. But that's if they um, present to you. Pim Daddy, everybody don't, they don't present to everybody. You know what I'm saying? They don't present themselves to everybody. Jeez, Ooh. That's amazing. That you even found that out. When you're feeling stuck and you need to charge and you're trying to figure stuff out and balance and ground, that's a good spot for you to go and connect. And you can even ask about past life stuff there because that tree has been there for hundreds of years. So it was on this plane when you were on this plane before. So if you have questions, you go sit there, you meditate there, you go and get some stuff. 
you have some lapis lazuli, I would take some of that with me. I would take um, black obsidian or black tourmaline for some protection. And then if you can get some petrified wood, that's a crystal. It helps with um, past life stuff and generational stuff. Oh yes, right after our first come well win. And yes, they answer. See? See? Trees are everything. That's why Mother Earth is so angry right now because they keep cutting down her trees and cutting down the forests and everything, trying to make way for more agriculture. That's why they killed all them fucking cows. They're sick of that shit. They're pumping up all those um, toxic emissions into the earth that's fucking up the ozone layer. Their burps, their farts, all of that tears it up. I put a, a video of um, a, a documentary that they have on Netflix on my page showing you the gas emissions that come from the cows and stuff and that they are cutting down all of these trees and stuff to make more space to raise more cows and they ain't doing nothing but A poisoning us and B fucking up the ozone layer. She wants me to be a Ricky master but I pick up them and not ready. You know how long it takes to be a Reiki master? You should be taking the courses now though. They have here in, in New York and in New Jersey they do two day courses um, for the first part of the certification. The two day courses are like eight, ten hours for each day. They long as hell. Um, but th those are the beginning steps. So start that. First, learn about energy. Um, I got a book. So remind me to send you a copy, a uh, uh, screenshot of this book I got off of Amazon. It's talking about spiritual protection, but it's teaching you about energetic fields and energy and seeing energy and the different ways that the energy looks when you're doing the um, healing and stuff. So remind me, I'll send you a picture of the book. There's two books actually, because one of them I have, it's very, you, you gotta, you gotta be like ready to read this book. Um, it teaches you about colors and what they represent and what they mean and when you see these particular colors, whether it's an aura or anything like that and the different formations and all of that kind of stuff. It gives you detail. Uh, but that's not something that you're going to learn overnight because the books are difficult as hell. You know what I'm saying? One of them is an easy read. The other one is not so much, you know. And so you got to look at it a few times to like really invest yourself into it and then take the course. And then as they're explaining the course to you, it should be a little bit more um, easier for you to kind of comprehend and get a, a, a link to what's going on. And then your guides are going to help you. Yeah, don't be scared. Because then you can heal yourself. You know how many Reiki masters and Reiki people I know that do their own healing on themselves? That's dope. It's very unique. Because um, it's a lot to do. And that's why it's not so many people out here that... Do. Everybody could pick up a tarot card and read the book, right? Everybody can't tell you what's going on with the energy field and what energy and what's blocking you and what's this and what's this and what's this and what's that. Your ladies, your people, oh, they have a field day with that. Because they're going to be right there helping you to show you, get here. Tap here. Get, you see this here? Do this. They, when you're intuitive, that helps all of this kind of stuff. So they just giving you keys for you to find out different methods and different ways because the ways that everybody else do something is not the way that you're supposed to be doing it. It's supposed to resonate with you. It's supposed to be authentic to you. And it will be because you've done this in a past life, baby. This ain't, this ain't your first rodeo doing that. When you start and you get a footing, it's going to wake up some stuff that's been dormant. Yeah. But you got to know how to protect yourself. As long as you have all the proper protections, you know who to stay, have around you to guard you when you're doing the works. You know how to cleanse yourself. You, you have to set the stage, right, for everything. The stage must be set. There are protective measures that must be done. Yeah. Yes, I know it ain't. I've been remembering a lot. Yes. So if you're remembering it, you're supposed to be implementing some of it. You know? We don't have these memories just to tell us what we did. I had this something. Um, one of my ladies, she was like, all you got to do is go and do this, 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 and this. And you're going to see who you was in your past life. Bitch, I did that shit. And I seen them two people. I was like, what the fuck is that? I walked off. I was like, I saw this and this. And she was like, that's what I saw too. And I was like, oh my God. 
She was like, my love, go look it up and learn about it so that you know X, Y, and Z. I was like, yo, I just need to move forward even more. Yeah, there's no stopping. If you're breathing, there's more to learn. If you're breathing, there's more to do. If you're breathing, there's more that you can obtain. I want it all while I'm still here. I'm not here to waste time. We came here with jobs. We came here with a journey. We came here with specific things in place that we were supposed to obtain, remember, learn, polish up one, sharpen our tools, and leave here stronger than when we arrived. Because when we arrived, we forgot. But we're supposed to be tapping into ourselves, right? So that we know what we are capable of. They want us to believe that we have absolutely no capabilities. They want us to believe that all we are are, are descendants of slaves. And that's not true. So we were great. We are great. And we have to remember that we have the ability to be great again. And once we strive for that and live our lives that way, everything opens up for us. So that's the message for today. You're great. You've been great. You have the ability to be great. Be great. Don't be lazy. Because the lazy man doesn't get anything but taken and used. And that's not what we're here to do. We're not here to be taken or used. Absolutely remember the past to heal the present. That's right. Because that's where the answers are. We don't remember nothing. This world today is not set up for us to learn anything. But our journeys and our paths and our contracts and our spirits and our souls say something completely different from what the world is here to tell us. And I'm going to listen to mine and not worry about what the world has to say because they ain't ready for what we got. They don't even know how to handle what we got. But you're supposed to know. Alright, I kind of, um, I'm kind of gassed out. If y'all got any questions, ask them. I'm going to get off here. <laughs> Why has it taken so long? You just sometimes you just don't know, right? When it's new and it's coming up and you things are happening around you, you just get so taken with what has transpired and the growth that you get stuck because you don't really know where it is next that you're supposed to go. Now you know. Now move. That's it. Don't worry about it. It takes some people longer than others, and it's okay as long as you know and you go and you get. What's yours? Because it's waiting for you. You ain't do nothing to push it from you. You ain't do nothing to block it from you. You ain't do nothing to make it sour to you. Bit by bit, step by step. In my calendar, on my cell phone, I put my day to day. When there's certain days that I'm supposed to do certain things, I put all that shit on there. I don't leave it to my own human brain to remember because I be forgetting stuff. So one thing go in, something else fall out. So I have reminders on my phone, in my calendars, all over the place to remind me that I'm supposed to do X, Y, and Z. Prayers, I put them in frames and put them all over my walls, all over the energies, on top of the energies all over the, my bovida, all over my ancestors, near my Arisha, whoever got the prayer, I put the prayers there, all of that. You, I'm not going to forget, I pass this shit every day. I'm over here every day. Ain't no way that when the day comes around, I'm supposed to forget it. I'm, I'm looking at it every time I pass it. So we have to set little points in our place of rest, and our place of wherever we live or we work or we dwell or whatever to keep us on track. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to book a reading soon, my thank you. You're welcome, baby. Yeah, you gotta remember this shit. If you don't listen, the world gets to us sometimes. We we spirit, but we still human too. And that balance is something else. That balance is something else. And as long as we learn the balance and don't stop the spiritual stuff, you good money. You good money, and that keeps us a uh, my lazy self needs to do more account. You have to. And you have to be willing to make the changes when you're told to make the changes so that you don't miss your window of opportunity. Because before, it, it, it's not like it's, people always say, oh, if what's for you is always for you. Yeah, it is. But that don't mean that you get it in the same amount of time. That don't mean that you don't miss your window of opportunity. And so now you have to work a little bit harder, a little bit more to get it back because you weren't paying attention when it was easiest for you to step up on it. Oh, baby. Um, 
bought them to get away. So, I'm so the remind, just like you said, that's a good idea. Yeah, you have to. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. And I don't do mine three, four, five months in advance. Because the calendar goes for the whole year, right? And sometimes it might even go a little further than that. I put that bitch in for six months at a time. So that every day that I'm going to do something for the next six months, my calendar is going to remind me. My, these cell phones are an amazing thing. They talk to you. Listen, use that. I do it all the time. Word. Everybody needs to have a book of shadows. Book a shadow, get you a nice leather binded book. I got mine from Barnes and Nobles. eBay sells them, Etsy sells them, every place sells them. They have the refillable paper that you can put inside them. And in that book of shadows, you want to start putting in your spiritual information that you need to know. Your guide's information. If you found out the name of your spirit guide, you know her likes, her dislikes, she get a page. This page is for her. Don't forget her shit. You got another spirit guide, this page is for her. Don't forget her shit. His, don't forget, his. write that shit down in your book, right? When you get readings and divinations and you get um, fixes and recipes, that shit needs to be in your book. I can do these things for cleansing. I can do these things for balancing. I can use these things for grounding. These things are for protection. All of that kind of stuff in your book. If you get the black and white composition notebooks, I use one for each thing that I'm doing. One I got for readings. One I got for recipes. One I got for products. One I got for pricing. My godfather love um, when it's time for a ceremony. He be like, what I charge for that? I be like, let me go get my, my fee book, right? So that I can tell the people the right amounts. Because we not trying to cheat nobody or nothing like that. I got all that shit in the book so that I can say this cost this, this cost this, this cost this, and this cost that. That price don't change. Unless there's inflation in the price of the animals. And right now, because of what's going on, the animals have gone up in, um, a little bit. Other than that, the herbs ain't going up. The, the, the liquor ain't going... None of the other stuff has been um, raised in prices. So we keep it in that same vein of what's going on. I love watching your lives. I've learned so much. Gracias. You're welcome, baby. Thank you so much for your energy. And thank you for being open to receive. I appreciate all of you guys that are always open to receive. That come to hear me talk. And come to hear me tell y'all what it is that y'all need. Um, and just give you ideas and just some energy so that you get your ball rolling again. If you're feeling stagnant, let this be the last day that you feel stagnant and start tomorrow off fresh. You know? Yeah. Everything is not a candle. Everybody's worrying about these big seven-day glass candles with all the shit on top of it. I get more with one of these than I get with anything else. There's a healing spring near where we live. We went and got a few gallons. There's a few in South Carolina. Actually, any recommendation so how to most effective with the size, with it, the size drinking. That goes in your spiritual baths. That goes in your cleansings. That goes in your potions. That goes in anything that you do with love, healing. Like, you know that love is the greatest uh, energy that you can even have, right? Love conquers, they, they say love conquers all, but you'll fight to the ends for love. You know what I'm saying? So when you add something that comes directly from nature, that runs off of these rocks that is healing and flowing, and you remember that the river energies are about flow and love and uh, 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 finances and good fortune and all of that kind of stuff you know that there's fish in there uh, and I'm talking about fresh water places you know what I mean all of that we need to survive and we need to live and all of that you put that in all of your stuff you can cleanse and purify stuff utilizing that also how do they come about with this power what what the water the spring it depends on where it is, you know? You have to remember, it's energy. This, now, take spirit away from it for a second and just think of science, right? Think of earth, think of matter, think of the elements, right? Water automatically is something that you need to survive. Where did the first water come from? Like fresh water? We don't know. But... God put it here because he knew that if he was going to make humans, that there's something that they needs to sustain us. So that alone lets you know how important it is. 
right? When the fetus is being um, cooked in, 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 in the uterus, it's in a sack of liquid, water, right? So it heals, it grows, it nourishes, it protects. It allows for freedom of motion and a conduit and all of these things that allows life that lets you know why the water is so important. It don't matter where it's from. That's the purpose of the water. So when you know the element's purpose and the things that it is able to accomplish and what it does for humans and for humanity and for earth and for plants and for anything with life, that lets you know how special it is. Think of it more that way. Not about where the power comes from. Everything on this plane comes from a higher source and a higher power that knew what it is that needed to be here to sustain us, help us grow, keep us alive, keep us protected, that could heal us. All of the things. If you follow an African-based tradition, you know that Olodumari put all that shit here. You know that he sent down certain Arisha to come down here and make land. Right? You know that he had to wrestle with Olokum from stop flooding the shit so that he can continue to make land because Olokum wasn't having it because remember what was covering the earth before land came water right when you look at the picture of the globe how much of it is blue water it's all around us that's why it's got power the earth lives off of it that's why it got power because God put it here and said that this is how it's going to be. That's why it has power. Huh? And then he sent some energies to watch over it. And take care of it. And try to get as many of us humans to respect it. So it keeps the energy of respect and love and motion and flow and all of that going because we believe it so. And that's the energy that we feed into it when we go to Oshun, when we go to Shola Wenge, when we go to uh, Madre Agua, when we go to uh, uh, all of the uh, uh, Yemaya, when we go to all of these energies, when we go to Olokum, when we go to Ajay Shalunga, when we go to all of these energies that reside at the river and the oceans, we feed in the energy into it so that makes it powerful. Right? And we respect it and we love it because we need it. And we treat it as such. That's power. Right? All right, my lovelies. I'm signing off. It is 10.57. I don't know what time I started this, but I know that I've been on here for way longer than I thought I was going to be. <laughs> I thank you all for coming and spending a little bit of time with me. I will save this live for anybody that's looking to um, go back at the beginning and see what was going on in here. Um, my schedule for divinations and readings are full for July. I have spots available for a couple for August. Um, so if you want to do that, um, my prices and everything is in my highlights. All of everything's there. Um, so that's that. Thank you guys for coming in tonight. You guys be blessed. You guys think about your lives. Think, think about the decisions that you need to be making. And those of you that are not doing what they're supposed to do, get on target. Discipline is the name of the game, right? Even when you don't feel like doing something, there'll be plenty of days that I'll be so tired that I'll just be like, these prayers is going to take me two hours to do. Don't nobody care about what I just said. Go do what you supposed to be doing. And I'll drag myself over there and do what I'm supposed to be doing. And it pays off. So, I'm, I'm worried about, I'm thinking about the outcome. I'm thinking about my tomorrows. I'm thinking about my next weeks, my next years, my next, my next. And I'm using my right nows to get to those. Not saying y'all can't have fun. Not saying that you shouldn't take a day off because self-care is what you need. Fun sometimes is what you need. Separating from the spiritual and just having a good time sometimes is what you need. But we always spiritual, so we are cognizant of what we're calling fun. We're cognizant of the energies that we're surrounding ourselves with. We're cognizant of the places that we are going and what we are going to be facing walking into these places. And I do be asking my spirits, is it safe for me to go X, Y, or Z? And let them tell me yes or no. 
I don't care what it is, concert, party, club, well, I don't do clubs no more, but any of that kind of stuff, like outside events and things of that nature, if there's some shit that's going to pop off, they be like, no, you can't go. And, I, and I'll wait and then watch the news later and see what happened or talk to somebody who went and some shit done popped off. I'll be like, oh, I wasn't supposed to be there. So many of my family members that still have jobs be like, oh, today I just ain't feel like going to work. I'll be like, well, what happened? They're like, girl, let me tell you what happened. And there'd be a bunch of shit that done popped off at work. And they just wasn't supposed to be there to be in the middle of all of that bullshit. Let my absence speak for itself. I wasn't there. You can't blame me for nothing. I wasn't part of nothing. I wasn't even there. So y'all got to listen to your bodies. Y'all got to listen to the energies. Y'all got to connect more. Please do that. That's all they want from you is to connect with you guys so that your own guides are doing their job, which is guiding you. Let them guide you. That's what they're supposed to do. We get in their way by thinking too much. Nobody asks you what you thought. What did you feel? What made sense? Let's do what makes sense. Good night, loves.